<laughs> the raven's heir. <laughs> Soon as one of them's caught, another one takes his place. Hey, Harold, have you read this? Harold? Harold? Harold, you hear me? This is no time for fun and games. And where's Harold? Harold? Well, there's another guard back there unconscious. That's probably him. The Eye of the Sphinx. Where is it? It's there. Oh, good. Then he hasn't got it yet. You mean... the Raven's heir? Shh! Turn it off. He's gonna steal the Eye. But how do you know? Doesn't matter. All that matters is that we catch him. Do you understand? Yeah, but... Do you understand? You and me, mate, we'll be heroes. All right, now, we just have to... What? Halt! Stop! You're under arrest! Hands up! I don't have time to play. I'm on duty. Haha, mm. <laughs> you're funny. But you don't look like a real cop. You don't even have a revolver. What's your name, boy? My name is Matthew Miller. And where are you from, Matthew Miller? Dillsburg, Pennsylvania, but my mom and I live in England now. She's taking care of some rich old lady. We're on our way to Venice at the moment. We're taking a cruise on a big ship. Impressive. You've already seen half the world. I've spent my entire life in Switzerland. Must be really boring. And what's with the gun? What do you need it for? It's the Raven. He was gunned down, so now I need a pistol. Dead birds don't need guns, nor do live ones. You don't know who the Raven is. Do you? He's the greatest burglar ever. He stole paintings from the Louvre, and those priceless eggs with gold and diamonds and stuff. And Bobby Dobbs says he replaced the crown jewels with rhinestones. I know who the Raven was. Although, I don't quite buy that bit about the crown jewels. You do know these days there are thieves far more dangerous than your old Raven. Two days ago, 
A precious ruby was stolen from the British Museum. There was an explosion. A guard was severely injured. Really? Yeah. And do you know what the papers say? <clears throat> you talk too much, Constable. Zellner, monsieur. Anton Jakob Zellner. Or did he pull a gun on you? No, monsieur. Get a move on. Inspector Legrand, it's a great honor to work with a celebrity like you. We appreciate the support of the Swiss police, but it'd be better if you'd remain seated and keep an eye on things. But, monsieur, surely I can be of assistance somehow. I saw a safe being loaded. We have everything under control. If you'll excuse me, I'll be in the first freight car at the back of the train for the rest of the trip. I'm not here to enjoy the beautiful scenery. I... I am a good observer, and I have finally honed powers of deduction. Thanks to that? I watched the people on the platform in Zurich. I know, for example, that that man over there is a violinist. <laughs> that would be more impressive if there weren't a violin case next to him. And I believe that the gentleman in the next carriage is a German doctor on his way to Italy to take up a new position. <laughs> and what gives you that idea? There's the rod of Asclepius engraved on his cufflink. And he's carrying a German-Italian dictionary. Maybe he's just taking a holiday in Italy, following in Goethe's footsteps. Too much luggage. And no, he's not retiring to Italy either. The suitcases are too shabby for me to believe that he can afford to retire in his late fifties. All right then, Constable... Zellner. Constable Zellner. If you're such a clever fellow, what am I doing on this train? I think you're looking for someone. You're just guessing. If I were looking for someone, I wouldn't spend the trip cooped up in a freight car, now would I? Well, that would seem to indicate that you're guarding something. And what might it be? I really couldn't say. But it must be very important. Why is that? Because you are very important. They wouldn't have assigned the case to you if it were just a trifle. <laughs> Let's assume that we really are transporting something very important on this train. And let's assume that it really is my job to see that it arrives safe. Then why isn't the train crawling with police? You don't want to arouse attention. If you don't, but why not? It's... it's a trap. <laughs> You've got a vivid imagination. I'll give you that. Well, that is impressive, I admit. But the fewer people involved, the better. We'll get along fine without you. You won't. Won't? Pardonnez-moi. I can help. And I will help. You're in my country. And I've been ordered to assist you. And that's exactly what I'll do. Whether you like it or not. Hmm. Clever and stubborn. Your commitment speaks volumes, Zelna. But this is my show, and I don't need you. Bon voyage. But how do you know? <sighs> oh, hello. You cheated. I did what? I saw you talking to the German doctor on the platform. He told you everything himself, and you were just pretending to put two and two together. And what of it? Do you know who that is? That's Inspector Nicholas Legrand. You have to impress him if you want to work with him. I'm going to tell on you. You'd really tell on me? To the very policeman who shot your dear Raven? Whoa, it was him? Mm-hmm. Hunted and killed Europe's most famous burglar. That's how he got his start. I won't tell him a thing. I wouldn't either. All right, Matthew. I have to do my work now. Everyone calls me Matt. Well, except for my mom. She calls me Maddie, as if I were a little kid. 
Whether Legrand wants my help or not, I'll keep my eyes open. Maybe I can change his mind. This morning, I thought I wouldn't be hungry because of all the excitement. Thankfully, I bought a sandwich with me anyway. so excited this morning that I couldn't eat anything. Needless to say, the second I got into train, I was famished. Fortunately, I bought an apple. I was so excited this morning that I couldn't eat anything. Fortunately, I was so excited that fortunately, I would fo I wrapped the apple core in the sandwich paper. That way I can carry it without making a mess of my trouser pocket. Still, I'd prefer not to have to carry them all day. napkin came with the croissant I bought at the train station. A guilty pleasure. I don't need that either. Every table has its own waste basket. Practical. No need to ever leave your seat. Every table has its own waste basket. We Swiss are crazy about trains. We don't just have a lot of railroads. We have the most beautiful ones in the world. Would you be so kind as to close them? I don't want to see them drop. Oh, pardon me. Vicarage in the Mirror, a detective novel by my favorite author, Lady Clarissa Westmacott. For years now, I've been trying to convince my theater group to stage one of her plays. I'll leave it there. I'll pick it up before I get off. The violinist is a good-looking fellow and he's traveling through the most beautiful mountain landscape in the world. But one can only hope that his violin is better tuned than he. Hello, sir. 
Helen. If I'm not mistaken, you're a violinist. That's true. A wonderful instrument. The violin music touches the soul. That's why I learned to play it. Do you play in an orchestra? No. Orchestras aren't really part of my world. A solo violinist. The best soloists travel a great deal and make a pile of money. Or so they say. In that case, I'm probably not one of the best. Are you traveling to Istanbul non-stop? No. I'll transfer in Venice to a ship. I'm on my way to Cairo. Cairo? I'm performing at a reception in the Egyptian museum there. I'm sure your recital will be a great success. But tell me, did you notice anything unusual on the train? Anything unusual? Persons acting suspiciously, for instance. For heaven's sake, is there cause for concern? Everything is in order, sir. We Swiss are just very cautious people. I understand. No, I didn't notice anything. Have a good trip. Thank you. The large map shows the different routes of the Orient Express. This train began in Paris and ends in Istanbul, as usual. Unfortunately, it will make most of its journey without me. The train covers a distance of more than 3,000 kilometers and stops at a dozen places. In many cities, they entertain the travelers with local specialities and culture and adventure, especially in southeastern Europe. This is the first car. The coal tender should be directly beyond this door and in front of it, the engine. take one if I have trouble. My daughter insisted that I take them with me. She was strongly against this little adventure, but I wasn't about to change my mind. I bought it last week at a flea market. I like it because it tells a story. I suppose the previous owner bought himself a newer one. This one still works just fine though. Very kind of you. Thanks. Oh, oh, pardon me. No, no, no problem. The uniform is waterproof. Uh, Mr. Lucio. Professor Edgar Lucio. Oh, a professor. Are you a scientist? Do you teach at the Sorbonne? No, I work at the British Museum in London. You don't say. So, you were, shall we say, an eyewitness to the burglary two days ago? No, I wouldn't say that. Oh, no? Well, there was a lot of commotion, but I didn't really pay much attention to it. There was a break-in in your museum, and it didn't concern you? Well, let's just say that nothing that's happened in the last 2,000 years concerns me. <laughs> Whatever you say. The famous Inspector Legrand is on this train. I imagine you know him. Uh, no, should I? You don't know him? And you also don't know what he's doing here? No. <laughs> Why should I? Just a thought. You're a representative of the British Museum. There's a guarded safe on the train. I'm sorry. I don't know what you're trying to imply. And now, please excuse me. May I ask where you are going? Of course. To Venice. I'm going to meet some colleagues there. Oh, Venice. A beautiful city, or so I'm told. Indeed. But I really have to take my leave now. Just one more thing. Did you notice anything unusual on the train? Here? On the train? No. 
I can't say that I have, although I did spend most of the time in my compartment. I don't want to take up any more of your valuable time, but you do understand, don't you, that what concerns me is the present, and especially the robbery at the museum. Yeah, of course, of course. It's just, I I'm in rather a hurry. You'll get in touch if you notice anything unusual, won't you, Professor? Of course, Constable. What's this? What's the matter, sir? The door. I can't open it. Ah. We'll sort it out somehow. The compartment is locked. But I didn't lock it. I don't even have a key. I asked the steward. He was going to bring me one, but he never came back. Someone locked it. Find the steward. He needs to bring me the key immediately. Calm down, Professor. I'll see what I can do. You don't understand. I have to get back in my compartment. All right. Just wait here. Perhaps a thoughtful conductor noticed that Professor Lucien wasn't in his compartment and locked it. You can easily lock the compartment door from inside by turning a little knob. But I didn't lock it. Professor, if you had locked the door from in there, you wouldn't be out here. Uh, that's true. He doesn't make a very balanced impression. And he, of all people, isn't bothered by a robbery in his own museum. The little label on the door reads Baroness von Trebitz. Blue blood on the Orient Express. Yes, what is it? Whoever that is, James, ask them whether they found my purse and then closed the door. The noise on this train is driving me crazy. You're missing a purse. Was it stolen? At the very least, I cannot find it, sir. It was stolen. When did you... When was the last time the Baroness saw her purse? What? In Zurich, on the platform, sir. I just asked where you last saw your purse. In Zurich, on the platform. James, tell him that I still had it when I got out to stretch my legs. The Baroness says... Maybe you lost it there. What? The Baroness never loses anything, sir. I never lose anything. Very well, then. I shall be on the lookout for your purse. If I might ask you a few questions about your fellow passengers. I thought he was looking for my purse. James, tell him to look for my purse. The Baroness wishes that you search for her purse. But couldn't we perhaps... <sighs> All right. First, the purse. I... <sighs> I will have a look around. Thank you, sir. I don't believe it. I never thought I'd ever meet you. Uh, pardon me, but uh, we'd prefer... It's all right, Miss Miller. I'd like to speak to the inspector. Unfortunately, just a constable, Lady Westmacott. I'm reading The Vicarage in the Mirror right now, for the fifth time at least. That's nice, Constable... Uh, Zellner. Anton Jakob Zellner. This is my companion, Miss Miller. A pleasure. May I ask what you're doing here? Are you on holiday? Holiday? Yes, so to speak. The first and last holiday of my life. Madam? I've been writing since I was a little girl. It became my job, and now I've stopped. So, 
This must be a holiday. You quit writing? Impossible. I have all of your books. Your Detective Partout is my favorite character. Then I have bad news for you. I killed the old wretch off years ago. I... I don't understand. I'd rather not discuss my work, Constable. Oh, well, fine. Are you traveling to Istanbul, Lady Westmacott? No. We are on our way to Venice. From there, we will take a ship to Cairo. As you may know, I have a penchant for archaeology. I fund a few excavations in Egypt. I travel to Egypt by ship as a young woman. And now I'm doing it again as an old woman. I see. As a writer, you must be very observant. Am I right? I mean, you have to study the behavior of people around you to create the characters in your novels, don't you? I solved the mystery of human nature a long time ago, Mr. Zellner. Since then, most people just bore me. Really? I had the impression you were eyeing me suspiciously as I came in. What do you want to know, Constable? Did you notice the man who just walked into the next carriage with a cup of tea? I did. He seemed nervous. He was waiting at the bar for the steward, and since the steward never appeared, he elected to help himself. He took two biscuits. He seems pretty young, but he's already a professor at the British Museum. Interesting. I'll have to talk to him later. Just out of courtesy, of course. Of course. Did you notice the blonde man with the violin case? <laughs> certainly did. He introduced himself and tried to make a good impression. People like him are drawn to wealth and fame, like moths to a flame. But his charms failed on you. I know him by name. David Kreutzer. He was a drain on my friend's purse. Do you think he has a money problem? People like him always have a money problem. No matter how much you give them, they always spend twice as much and complain that they have far too little. Did you notice anyone else? What about the doctor or the baroness? I notice that you've asked me about everyone, except for the inspector who went in the direction of the freight car a few minutes ago. Isn't that the Frenchman who made his name when he caught the raven? I wouldn't quite say caught. Well, shot. Why don't you ask me about him and my theory about what he's doing here? I don't think we should discuss Inspector Legrand's investigation in public. Legrand, right. That was his name. Will he save the day again? Or will you, Constable? There's something else. A passenger's purse has gone missing. I suppose you haven't seen it. I'm sorry, Constable Zellna. As you know, I only deal with murder, not burglary. Have you asked my boy yet? Maddie is good at finding things. I'll go and do that now. As much as I like to keep talking, duty calls. You were right. Madam? I did observe you as you came in. You seemed so... Uh, eager. I... It's been a long time since I've had a chance to prove myself, madam. And this is it? Your chance? I do hope so. Then grab it. Even small people can make big changes, as my friend Ronald likes to say. I shall do my best. An extraordinary woman. Talented, intellectual, extremely rich, and the most successful writer of all time. Yet, they say she can be difficult on occasion, and that she's rather unhappy. The steward must have forgotten the toothpicks. Normally, he would offer them discreetly after dinner. Mmm, butterscotch. I've loved them since I was a child. Their only drawback, they don't play nice with false teeth. Maybe if I just suck it. Who'd have thought that one day butterscotch would remind me of my age and of all the things I had to leave behind?
I suppose the steward won't object to me having a look around in his absence. on which the steward writes orders. Empty. Maybe he didn't use it because there's not much to do today. I don't need the pad, but the pencil might come in handy. The steward probably uses the scissors on hard to open packages. These days nearly everything is sealed up tight. A colleague recently told me about dry powdered soup and small bags. I couldn't believe it. I'll leave the scissors here. If I need them, I know where to find them. Perhaps he keeps the compartment keys in there. Locked. Hmm. Where could he be? A shortwave radio. It's amazing how small these things have become in the last 10 years. need any just now. It would be rather embarrassing if I met Legrand and wasn't able to open my mouth because it's been stuck shut or because I lost some teeth. Right. How can I help you? Tell me, did you notice anything suspicious here on the train or in Zurich? You mean, except for the fact that my suitcase was stolen on the platform? No. Is there any reason to be concerned? No. Just routine. Constable Zellner, please don't think I'm naive. I spotted the inspector from Interpol. Legarde is his name, if I recall correctly. Legrand. If you say so. At the train station in Zurich, he put a cash box into the safe and then kept close watch as it was loaded onto the train. Don't tell me that a man at his pay grade routinely tramps across the Alps just to keep an eye on cash boxes. A cash box? Like the ones you'd find in safe deposit boxes? Precisely. And I believe we both have a good idea just what's inside. I do indeed have a theory, but what's yours? A ruby was stolen in London. One of the legendary Eyes of the Sphinx. The second jewel, an emerald, is rumored to be in a Swiss bank vault, if I remember correctly. Both jewels were supposed to be exhibited together in Cairo for the first time in 50 years. It does make one wonder. Indeed. Any news about the robbery in London? Quite something, wasn't it? It must have been professionals. The way they disabled one of the best security systems in the world. Most impressive. People were injured. Well, one cannot execute a robbery of that scale without uh, collateral damage. It seems like the Raven has finally found a worthy successor. 
we can look forward to new and spectacular coups. I'm afraid I won't enjoy his exploits this time around if the new Raven is so reckless. That's your prerogative. May I borrow your newspaper? You can take the section with the article on the burglary. You're interested in that bit, aren't you? <laughs> you caught me out. Here you go. Dankeschön. There's something else. Do you know where the conductor is? Hmm. I'd like to know that myself. I told him to search for my missing suitcase in Zurich. He hasn't got back to me yet. He's probably in cahoots with the thieves and didn't bother getting back on the train. If we don't crack down on vermin like them, the rabble will rule the world one day. Well, at the moment, we still don't know what really happened. He is not here doing his job. That's bad enough. I meant to ask, the Baroness is missing her purse. A Baroness? This train is really full of the creme de la creme. The queen or crime is over there, and now a Baroness as well. Have you seen the purse? Unfortunately, no. Do you know Lady West Macott? You were talking to her. Well, I'm an admirer of her work. Like so many others. I once read in the newspaper that only Shakespeare and the Bible sell more copies than her crime novels. I read that too. She must be filthy rich. As a doctor, I'd have to work a thousand years to earn that kind of money. Auf Wiedersehen, Dr. Gebhardt. Goodbye, Kanstuhl. It was a pleasant chat, really. with a padlock. I suppose it contains tools for the train's crew, maybe for coupling and uncoupling the cars. At any rate, it's positioned so that it's easier to reach from the ground than from up here. Locked. Bang! Bang! Uh -huh. Don't move! Matt, have you gone mad? I'll shoot! Hey, my pistol! You'll get it back in Venice. I could have fallen under the wheels. I thought you were a ghost. Ghosts don't exist. They do too, once you flew past the window. Yes, yes, sure. Now get moving. Oh, man. The box is secured with a padlock. I won't be able to open it without a key. The ladder leads up to the roof. It will be suicidal to climb up there while the train is at full speed. The wind, tunnels... No, I'll stay down here. I strongly suspect that the door is locked. No, it's open. Feathered fiend. Put the gun down, Robert. If I may introduce Constable Robert Oliver from the yard. And this is the revered Constable Zellner of the Swiss police, who obviously couldn't control his curiosity. Then I was right. You really do want to lure someone into a trap. That's none of your business. Perhaps that someone recently struck in London. And how would I bait my trap then? With an eye? An eye on its way from Zurich to Cairo? <laughs> someone has done his homework. Well done, Constable. Are we still in Switzerland? I could be your eyes on the train, as long as you're here in the freight car. Oh, really? 
There is a certain Professor Lucien on the train. He's an archaeologist from London. And what's his story? Well, it seems someone locked him out of his compartment. Locked him out? Well, yes. The door is locked and he's standing outside without a key. Was it locked from inside? It may have been. Hmm. Do you think the locked door could be important? Professor Lucien plays an important role in this story. Well then, Constable Zellner, be my eyes and ears on the train and see that Professor Lucien gets back into his compartment. Report back to me when you're through. My pleasure, Monsieur. And then there's the Baroness. She's missing her purse. Baroness von Trebitz. Interesting. Indeed, sir. But it has nothing to do with our case. So I shouldn't concern myself with the matter. Ah, uh, why not? It's your job as a policeman. But don't expect me to be particularly interested in a lost purse. What do you know of this Raven's heir? He tried to blow me up. Robert, we don't know who we're dealing with yet. In any event, the new Raven is a more dangerous man than the old one. How do you know it's a man? It could just as easily be a woman. Or several men. And anyway, how do you know that it's a new Raven? Monsieur? Never mind. I go attend to the door now. Good. And Constable Zellner? Yes? Don't bother us unless you have something new to report. Of course. A thief might get anxious if there's too much activity in the freight car. Exactement. Knock twice. Then we'll know that it's you. Understood. An investigation on behalf of the Grand that takes me one step closer. If I can convince him of my competence, I might even be able to see this case through to the end. place to be reading the newspaper. I'd better go back inside. Let's see if there's any news. Blah, 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 blah. Eye of the Sphinx. One of two priceless jewels. Extraordinary pure ruby. 2000 BC, etc., etc. Old news. And here, shocking burglary. Professional thieves surprised by museum guard Charles Langley and Constable Robert Oliver of Scotland Yard. Explosion. Constable Robert Oliver from Scotland Yard. He was there when the first eye was stolen. Now he's guarding the second one. Lunas Drops, the calming herbal liqueur for women. A glass a day, it relaxes the nerves and maintains domestic tranquility. Luna's drops, if you don't want to bother your husband. Hmm, <laughs> a story about the upcoming Oscars and Cleopatra's chances of winning. An incredible feat. They build the largest movie set of all time in Rome. And because of the main actress's many illnesses, several changes of director and months of delays, costs shot to over $40 million the most expensive movie ever made. A record never to be broken. John Surtees won the Formula One World Championship for the first time on Saturday. He also won the World Championship in motorcycle racing from 1956 to 1960, making him the only man in motorsports to win world championships in both motorcycle and Formula One events. Hmm, not really my cup of tea. Too loud, too fast. Too much exhaust.
Matt will get his pistol back in Venice. That and a good dressing down. Yes, ma'am. Uh, my son didn't make any trouble for you, I hope. It's just that he just walked past us, silent and seething. That's usually a sign that someone's laid down law. I'm afraid so. He played a trick on me, a rather dangerous one. The lad left me no choice but to take away his wooden pistol as a punishment. I understand. And thank you. Maddie is a very lively child. Sometimes he needs a strong fatherly hand. Where is Matt's father, if I may ask? He's... he's gone. Ah, I understand. Could you, uh, leave Maddie's pistol here, perhaps? So you don't have to bother with it? Of course. I told him he wouldn't get it back until Venice. Very well. Thank you again, Constable. to be angry with me for the rest of the trip? Until I get my pistol back. I gave it to your mother. Oh, man. Couldn't you have just raked me over the coals? Would you have learned anything from that? I didn't learn anything from this either. Should... Should I ask for an autograph? That will be quite unprofessional. But on the other hand... Come on, Matt. Did you really think that you can ignore me for longer than I can ignore you? I'm Swiss. It's practically a national sport. Matt is digging in his heels. I won't get anything out of him as long as he's angry with me. Do you like a butterscotch? You think you can bribe me? I have no reason to. You made trouble and got punished for it. Take it as a peace offering. Just four? If I'm faster than you, there'll only be three. Hey! Friends again? Mm-hmm. All right, then. And no dangerous nonsense anymore. Okay. Your mother is Lady Westmacott's companion, correct? Yeah, but it's not like you think. At first I thought, boy, you must be really wicked if you need to pay for friends. But the lady's really okay. A bit odd and really old. But other than that, she's great. She likes me. The lady has peculiar taste. Hey! You and your mother, do you both live on Lady Westmacott's estate? I'm only there for the holidays. Most of the time I'm at boarding school. I imagine that's not very pleasant. No, it's fine. I have friends there. You always have to be so quiet in the lady's house. And I'm not allowed to bring any friends. Such a big house with so many places to hide. And no one to play hide and seek with. You said it. And how long has your mother worked for the lady? Two years. And your father? What does he do? 
He stayed home. I used to go fishing with him and hunting. He even let me shoot a real gun. And then? Then Mom fought with him, and he left. I was seven. Oh, and uh, how old are you now? In eight months, I'll be nine years old. And do you already know what you want to be when you grow up? A burglar? <laughs> no, we'll see. Maybe an actor. Really? Well, I don't know. You need a lot of talent for that. I'm an actor in a theater group, you know? You are? Oh, yes. And I'm one of the best in our group, if I may say so. I get really deep into my roles, you know? I don't just talk like the character. I think like him. I become him. It's the only way to... <coughs> Matt, are you okay? <coughs> You just have to be good at copying things to be an actor. That... that wasn't bad. Disturbing, but not bad. The Baroness in the second compartment over there is missing her purse. Do you have any idea where it could be? <laughs> Do I ever? Mm hmm? That guy over there with the violin case? What about him? He picked up something in Zurich and put it in his violin case. Really? Yeah, and he made sure that nobody saw him. But you saw him? Uh-huh. Did you also see what it was? Nah, not really. But now that I think of it, it must have been the Baroness's purse. I should look into it, shouldn't I? I think so. Tell me, have you seen the steward anywhere? Mm, no. He was walking around a little while ago, though. Hopefully they didn't forget him in Zurich. <laughs> What's he supposed to do? I'm looking for a key to open a compartment door. Did you check his things behind the counter? I'm sure the drawers will be locked. Can't you break it open? Or pick the lock like the raven? Perhaps. But I'd need a piece of wire or something like that. Ask my mom. She has a lot of hairpins. She doesn't like the wind messing up her hair. Hmm. Thanks for the tip. So long. So long, -er. The violin case looks pretty old, but that doesn't say anything about the quality of the violin. The best violins are often in the oldest cases. I doubt the violinist will let me have a look in his case. Excuse me, sir. A passenger is missing her purse. Perhaps it was stolen, really. Someone saw you with your violin case on the platform in Zurich. What's the meaning of this? I didn't steal anything. Nobody said you did. I just wanted to ask you whether you might have noticed anything on the platform. Ah. Well, why did you think I was accusing you? Well, I thought uh, because you mentioned my violin case in the context of the purse. Apropos, may I have a look at your violin? It must be a very extraordinary piece. Oh, that's, uh, that's not possible. It's a genuine Guarneri. Very valuable. Very. And also very sensitive. What could harm it here? Light? Air? May I ask you to open the violin case? No, you may not. I'm not guilty of anything. I'm afraid I have to insist. Then I'm afraid you need a warrant. I will not stand back and let you rifle through my belongings. Have a good trip. Thank you. I bought it last week at a flea market. I like it because it tells a story, I suppose. Because of you. Good. 
go somewhere else if you don't like it. The violinist is uncooperative. I'm not authorized to search his belongings against his will and without a good reason. And he knows it. I have to come up with something. I think the violinist is hiding something. But to be sure that Matt was right, I have to get a look in the violin case. How can I do that without the violinist's consent? All right, Matt, tell me now. The violinist won't let me check his violin case. Of course he won't. He's hiding something. Should I distract him? then you can have a look in his case. Hmm. What do you suggest? I... I could tell him there's a suitcase full of money in the next carriage. If he's a thief, he'll definitely want to take a look at it. I don't think he'll fall for that. Or I could insult him and then run away. He'll try to catch me, and you'll have a chance to look in that violin case. Now that I think about it, this is something I have to attend to on my own. It would be expecting a bit much from a little boy. Little boy? You must be kidding. Uh, sorry, uh, Sheriff, but your idea about distracting him is good all the same. So long. So longer. That makes no sense. The violinist would close the window immediately, and I wouldn't have enough time to search his violin case. of the toothpick is stuck between the window and the rudder. What now? I'll complain to your superiors. What are you doing there? I was taking your case for safekeeping, since it was left here unattended. When I picked it up, the cover unlatched. I never leave my violin unattended. Ah, then no one else could have put this purse in your case. Um, someone must have snuck it in, like you. Aha, uh -huh, for sure. And you have a pistol in the case because... I don't owe you an explanation. It's mine. I have a gun license. Now, take the damned purse to the Baroness and leave me in peace. Just get lost. It won't be that easy. I'll report the incident to the Italian authorities in Venice. I'll inform the authorities in Venice. They'll decide what to do with them. Did you find the Baroness's purse? I did indeed. You did? Out of my way, James. Oh, wonderful. Tremendous work, Inspector. Constable, Baroness. Constable Anton Jakob Zellner at your service. May I ask you where this beautiful train is taking you? <laughs> to the madhouse, I'm afraid. One is close to the brink of insanity with this constant shaking and rattling. Have you ever tried flying, Baroness? Do you know how little luggage one is permitted upon an aeroplane? It defies all reason and good taste. Have you heard about the burglary at the British Museum? Heard about it? I'm directly affected by it. How so? I'm in charge of the Friends of the British Museum. And for your information, I'm financing the exhibition. Exhibition? What exhibition? 
The exhibition in Cairo. <laughs> Where did you think we were going? The eyes of the Sphinx were supposed to be exhibited together for the first time in decades. Now that one of them is gone, the exhibition will be rather less sensational than we'd hoped. On the other hand, there's a chance that all the uproar will generate more attention, and that the exhibition will still be a great success. Oh, perhaps. But we wanted to show them both together. That was the whole point. Can you tell me anything about your fellow passengers, Baroness? No, not really. I could hardly care who's penned up in here with me. Oh, no, no, no. Wait a minute. Lucien is here, the professor. Poor fellow. The eye of the Sphinx that was stolen belonged to his collection. Professor Lucien is an Egyptologist. <laughs> but of course. As director of the Egyptian department at the British Museum, he has to be. The whole burglary thing really upset him. Director Thomas told me he was a nervous wreck. I'll take my leave of you now, Baroness, and I do hope your journey becomes more bearable. <laughs> yes, indeed, Inspector. Constable. James? Lady Westmacott. Yes? I uh, was wondering if you might... Sign your book, Constable Zellner? If it isn't too much of an inconvenience. Of course it's an inconvenience, but only a small one. You are welcome. Thank you so very much. There are thousands of things I would like to ask her, but nothing would justify neglecting my duties here on the train. Mrs. Miller made a good impression. She wanted to protect Lady Westmacott from me, a pushy admirer. Very diligent, but she does seem a little nervous and tense. I imagine she has her work cut out for her with Matt, and a difficult bus from what they say. Mrs. Miller? Yes? Did you notice anything unusual on the train? Oh, I'm afraid not. I was totally focused on my work. She's always got an awful lot to do, my Mary. You have to tell me if that's not all right with you. Good Lord, child. Knit as much as you want. So, nothing out of the ordinary? No, Constable. Uh, please excuse my unusual request, but Matt said you have some hairpins. Could I borrow one? One of my hairpins? It's a long story. It would be a big help. Well, if you really need one. Go ahead, Mary. The constable won't do it any harm. Will you, Mr. Zellner? Of course not, madam. Is this one okay? It'll do nicely, madam. How very kind of you. Goodbye, Mrs. Miller. Goodbye, Constable. Suddenly, it's me who's the thief on the train. Oops, that 
was easier than expected. Hmm, batteries, a toothbrush, a shaving brush, but not the key to the compartment door. Just this one. Hmm, too small for the door, but it might still be useful. I'll leave the scissors here. If I need them, I know where to find them. Constable Anton Jakob Zelda, whose time shall surely come. Clarissa Westmacott, DBE. I bet I could really get a grip on the boat with these. Well, come on then, hurry up. Hello? I barely left the window ajar. Uh. Nothing to see. Ah. Are you okay? Hmm? Yes. Fine. Do you have any idea why the door was locked? I don't know. Uh, maybe the constant vibrations caused the lock to lock itself. You can't possibly believe that. Well, then what's your theory? The conductor could have locked it from the outside. On the other hand, it could have been someone here in the compartment who locked the door from the inside. Who? And where have they gone? They could have climbed out there. Who would be that insane? You tell me, Professor. So, what are you hiding in your bag? What do you have that would be worth stealing? No, nothing. No valuables? Certainly not. <laughs> Not on my salary. It was enough for a first-class compartment on a luxury train. That's... my business. You're playing a dangerous game, Professor Lucien. I believe you and the inspector do know each other. Well, what makes you think that? It seems like the two of you are running a haulage company specializing in safes. I, I won't comment on that. It's a matter of international importance. Tell me, Professor. Would you happen to have a key in your briefcase? Uh, and if so, would it still happen to be there? Then all would be as it should. That's what we hope, at least. All the same, 
It would have been a simple matter for a thief to make an impression of it. Right, Professor? Oh. And the breaking? It wasn't an issue for you? Even though you're the head of the department where it occurred? All right. The burglary was most upsetting. And shocking. And I didn't know what to do, okay? And you couldn't just tell me that. The fewer people who know about it, the better. I can't trust anyone. You're not only going to Venice, are you? Could it be that your journey will continue? All the way to Egypt, perhaps? I'm on your side, but the more you lie to me, the more difficult you make my job. I like to look around a bit. Of course. The Bible, Grimm's fairy tales, Moby Dick, and gin, whiskey, and rum. All classics. Hmm. No, nothing interesting. I really wonder what the professor is hiding from me. But I can't just rifle through the luggage of innocent citizens. This is the 60s. Wow. You have a very nice fountain pen. Pricey. If you'd managed to decode hieroglyphics that boggled the best minds of the last 3,000 years, you'd have received a gift like that as well. What's this? What do you have there? It's a button. From a suit or a uniform, I guess. The burglar might have lost it. Maybe. Or maybe not. If I notice anyone with a missing button on his jacket, I'll ask him about it. But I wouldn't get my hopes up. If there was a burglar, he climbed out the window and jumped off the train. Assuming there really was someone in the compartment, and he climbed out the window, where's he gone? Did the burglar leave any clues? Here's something. Might be fingerprints. They're tough to make out, but I do believe there are some prints on the window. If I had a forensics kit, I could make the prints visible with carbon powder. They're tough to make out, but I do... If I had a... Goodbye, Professor. Goodbye. found the button in front of the window in the archaeologist's compartment. The burglar might have lost it while climbing out the window, but there's no proof for my theory. I don't think the Baroness has any more information for me, and she's not the most pleasant conversationalist either. Pardon me, sir. We could have used you a few minutes ago.
I'd better let him read his newspaper if I don't have any pressing questions. Inspector Legrand, anything to report? I got Professor Lucien into his compartment using a pair of pliers. Did you notice anything inside the compartment? The window was open. Someone could have climbed out. And the professor? Acted suspiciously. He rummaged around in his leather bag. And? He seemed to have found what he was searching for. Good. Good work. Now, perhaps you could give me some information. All right. We should... What? The light's gone out! Flashlights! Ah! Get off me! There, sir! An envelope! <laughs> My dear Nico, you should take a closer look at the box. Ah, What the dickens? It's a Away with it! Take cover! Is everyone all right? Are you hurt? Quick thinking. Well done, Zellner. <coughs> I think the tunnel collapsed. Then he's trapped. Hurry, we have to lock the second exit. Sir, there's a fire up ahead. The engine's burning. It's a distraction. Hurry, block the exit. But, sir... <coughs> the fire will consume all the oxygen. He's right, Inspector. A fire in a narrow tunnel is extremely dangerous. Merde! Go to the front of the train, find the engineer, and tell him to move the train out of the tunnel. Yes, sir. Are you ready? You have to uncouple the freight car, you understand? <coughs> I understand. I'll see to the passengers. They should all wait in the tunnel. We'll check each one in turn as they go out. Let's get to it. The wheels came off the track during the explosion. Even if it were possible to pull the car out of the rubble, you wouldn't get far with it. The tunnel may very well have collapsed. It's difficult to see much because of the darkness and dust, but something certainly crushed the rear of the freight car.
It's possible that the other freight cars are intact and it only caught the one in which the dynamite exploded, but I'll have to uncouple it if the train's to be able to leave the tunnel. The inspector's trap failed. The thief must have got wind of it. Mm, worse than that, he turned the tables. To win a game of cat and mouse, you have to know who is the cat and who is the mouse. It's still quite warm and too warped to open. <laughs> Hello? I'm pretty sure that the noise came from the roof, but you can't see your hand in front of your face up there. pills for my heart. I'm supposed to take one if I have pain. I haven't needed them yet. Sure, I could uncouple the car if I only had enough light to see what I'm doing. My God, what a fire. I hope Constable Oliver can at least reach the engine. A lot was damaged by the sudden stop, but the bowl was thick enough to survive the fall. The last of the candy has vanished. Measured against the exploding freight car, I think the railway will overlook the loss. The last of the can. <gasps> oh, pardon me. I did not mean to scare you. What are you doing here, Doctor? Legrand asked me to check whether there are any passengers left on the train. Really? No one is here, except for me and you. Excellent. Then I will continue searching at the front. Did anyone act suspiciously before the explosion? Did anyone leave the seat, for example? I was the only one on the train who wasn't seated when the freight car exploded. Thank God. Otherwise, I would have been caught by the blast as well. You certainly were lucky. Perhaps I was. What happened over there? The inspector said something about gas canisters that exploded. He didn't want to scare you. The truth is, it was a bomb meant to kill him and the Bobby. My God, an attack, but who would? The investigations are ongoing, but first we have to get the burning train out of the tunnel. Oh, of course. How are the passengers? They are in a state of shock, of course. The blackout and the sudden stop were frightening enough, but then the explosion, the dust, everyone rushed for the exits. I was helping the American woman bring Lady Westmacott to safety. They are waiting outside in the tunnel. One entrance is blocked by a fire, and the other one seems to have collapsed. Continue to search the train. I'll decouple the buried freight car. All right. Doctor, can you give me a few matches? Oh, certainly. Thanks. I'll meet you outside. Do hurry.
I should concentrate on uncoupling the freight car. I'm positive that Legrand has everything else under control. I should con... see Legrand or the constable, but I can make out the silhouettes of some of the passengers. They seem to be unscathed. All the same, the fire is getting bigger and I don't have much time. The fire is sucking the oxygen out of the tunnel and filling it with poisonous carbon monoxide. Here in the Alps, there have been dozens of catastrophes in tunnels that ended with death by asphyxiation, but not on my watch. I noticed the extinguisher earlier. Doesn't match the decor. I suppose that the railway company had to comply with safety regulations at the cost of aesthetics. It'd be useless against the fire out there and it's too cumbersome to carry around. At best, I can use it here. It must be good for something. The chair either fell over thanks to the sudden stop, or an escaping passenger knocked it over. Warning to get off the train as quickly as possible after a sudden stop and a massive tremor, that's understandable. It's not bothering me, I'll leave it there. I noticed the extinguisher earlier, doesn't match the decor. I It'd be useless against the fire out. At best, I... Pills for my I'm supposed The other passengers escape from the train. I can see their silhouettes in the light of the fire. If I don't hurry up and uncouple the freight car, they'll suffocate. There's a noticeable draft here. Maybe it's because of the fire, or perhaps there's still a hole through which the air is coming. The latter will be quite welcome. It will buy us some more time. Nothing. It'd be blown out right away. I better save the matches.
The last of the candy has vanished. The last of The last of the can- The chair either fell over thanks- Warning to get off the train is- Even if I could set the fabric alight, how would I carry the fire? A burning match. be good for something. It'd be useless against the fire out there and it's too cumbersome to carry around. At best, I can use it here. A burning match. Must be good for something. <clears throat> All right, let's go. Whiskey, scotch, rum, liqueurs, enough to entertain everyone on the train all the way from Paris to Istanbul. Hmm, <coughs> high proof rum. Could be useful.
That should do it. The last of the mm. The alcohol burns with a dim blue flame. It doesn't shed enough light and will probably burn out in a few seconds. Won't solve my lack of light. I'll have to try something else. Rum from Austria. Believe it or not, it's 80% alcohol by volume. There's no way anyone would drink it straight. Filled the bowl about a third of the way with rum. Phew, strong stuff. Carling Black Label, a British beer. That should do it. I can't really say the fabric was eager to soak up the rum. I, on the other hand, soaked up enough in my fingers to smell like a drunk. The alcohol burns with a dim blue flame. It doesn't shed enough light and will probably burn out in a few seconds. Won't solve my lack of light. I'll have to try something else. I expect the rum will burn like ethanol, but I'd better not test that theory in the bottle. I filled the bowl about a third of the way with rum. Phew, strong stuff. Champagne, the finest. Maybe we'll open a bottle if we get out of the tunnel alive. Until then, though, it's no use to me. No good. Insufficient alcohol content. For practical purposes, I mean, not for drinking. That'll get me something like a Molotov cocktail. 
I want light, but I don't want it to come from a wall of flames. The material won't be able to soak up any more alcohol. I bought it last week, second hand. It was seven. The alcohol burns with a dim blue flame. It doesn't shed enough light and will probably burn out in a few seconds. Won't solve my lack of light. I'll have to try something else. I'll never set fire to the chair like using matches. I need a better plan. Hmm. I want... Hmm. Just as I expected, the alcohol burns with an almost invisible flame. The flame is hot, but it's no use as a light source. It's taking too long. Time is running out. Flame is the alcohol on the curtain burns just as darkly as in the bowl. It's no help. Alcohol on the curtains will burn just as dimly as in the bowl. It's no good. It's taking too long. Time is running out.
alcohol on the curtain burns just as darkly as in the bowl. It's no help. It's taking too long. Time is running out. Even if I could set the fabric alight, how would I carry the fire? The flame is hot, but it's no use as a light source. There's a pretty intense draft here. The fire is sucking up the oxygen. A fine, but rather heavy curtain. The surface shimmers and feels smooth, probably doesn't burn easily, like the tablecloths. Safety regulations require it, which, given the present situation, is actually a good thing. Okay, I'll smear some grease on the curtain. The grease from the coupling is all over the curtain. It'll never be clean again. The grease from the I'm the god of fire. That's better now. Incredibly basic mechanism, the kind that lasts forever. A lever on a pressure sleeve running along a thread. Aha, I can uncouple it with this lever. Okay. Good. The coupling isn't under tension anymore. I should be able to uncouple it now. 
There we go. Time to get out of here. Listen, everybody. Listen! <laughs> Robert, what's the situation? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't find the engineer, so I got in the driver's cab myself and released the brake. All right. Good job. You too. Listen, please! Matty! Where's Matt? Where's my son? Relax, madame. I'm sure... Hey. Matt, where are you? Oh. Matt, are you there? Nothing. The engine and the coal tender are burning stronger and harder. The airflow is feeding the flames. I have to decouple the wagons immediately. Sooner or later, the engine will be blown apart. The boiler is under extreme pressure and there's nobody to control it. It's all up to me. The boiler... Hey. There you are. What were you thinking? Ah, uh, come out of there. Is he gone? Is who gone? The man. What are you doing on the train anyway? Why didn't you wait in the tunnel with the other passengers? I... I wanted to get my pistol. Your pistol? There's so many cops and thieves and explosions and everything. Then I need a pistol too. Makes sense. Well, what about this man? There was a man. He was coughing. One of the passengers? I think he came down from the roof. All right. First, I'll stop the train, and then we'll have a chat, okay? You want to come out? Hmm. Good idea. You stay put. Hold tight, Matt. That makes things extremely complicated. The emergency brake either was damaged in the explosion or was sabotaged. But whatever, it's not working. I... I think I should try to uncouple the locomotive. I mean, how else can I stop the train? I suppose this handbag belongs to Miss Miller, Matt's mother. Lady Westmacott's bag is probably smaller and more expensive. Aha!
get in. I presume the Baroness's luggage toppled over and is blocking the door. Soft towel, very comfortable. I'll wrap it around my neck to keep my hands free. What have you got yourself into? Couldn't you have just let it be? But no, of course not. And now you're here, on an out of control train in the Alps, responsible for the life of a child who'd be doomed without you. What are you waiting for, eh? Time to save the day. The tanks don't seem to be damaged. The water is still running. The situation isn't that desperate. Professor Lucien's suitcase. Unlike the leather bag, he left it behind when he fled the train with the other passengers. I don't think there's anything interesting in it. Whatever the professor is hiding from me, it's in his leather bag. Soaking up the cold water. <sighs> that would only work if it were a water pistol. They see out of the window because of the smoke. I don't know how much coal is burning on the tender up there, but it must be tons. I can't do anything about the fire. A steam locomotive is controlled chaos. Fire, hot steam, enormous pressure, all kept in check by tons of steel. A runaway steam locomotive is a bomb waiting to explode. If the emergency brake doesn't work, I'll have to try something else. <sighs> Here goes. Ouch! Hot! Locked. is for emergencies. If this isn't an emergency, I don't know what is. Take the axe with me when I explore the rest of the train. It's just in the way here.
Okay. We'll do it the hard way. Should do the trick. The coupling won't release because it's under too much tension. The engine is pulling the cars and its full force is acting on the coupling. It's just a hook, but it won't budge like that. Especially since it's on a downward slope. The engine is slowly it could I uncoupled the locomotive at full speed. Not bad, eh? Do you think we'll get in trouble? Because of the locomotive? I don't think so. It was pretty old already. Come out so we can have a chat. I checked the entire train. There's no one on it except for us. What an adventure. Oh, yeah. Tell me, what did you see on the train? <sighs> well, it was like this. I wanted to get my pistol. And then? When the guy was gone, I got up and banged on the window. 
I wanted to get out of there. But then I thought, what if the guy can hear me from the next car? So I got scared, and I hit again. You did well. Are you sure it was a man? Yeah, very sure. What else could he be? A woman? Heh, <laughs> no. Girls can't be thieves. Girls are always honest. <laughs> if only you knew. Did you recognize the man? Have you met him before? I don't think so. Would you recognize him if you saw him again? No. It was very dark and I was hiding. Was he a tall man or a short man? Just a man. I think he was a bad man. Why do you think that? He was sneaking around, even though everybody else was outside in the tunnel. Maybe he just wanted to get his wooden pistol. Oh, man. The envelope that the man lost... Where is it? I thought it might be important. I think we should have a look. Hmm. Some cash. An Italian passport. Blank. Very interesting. And here, a ticket for... for... For the cruise! What? The tickets we have for the big ship from Venice to Cairo look exactly the same. Interesting. May I keep it? What do you want to do with it? Take a vacation. It's evidence. And my chance to go with you. The ticket and everything else in the envelope are part of my investigation. And you have no part to play in Cairo. If I hadn't given you the envelope, you'd have no proof that the Raven's heir would be on the ship. Ugh. The ship is his next chance to steal the eye, and he won't give up until he has it. And that's precisely why you should let me come along. No. I deserve to come along. <sighs> what you did was extraordinary. Far more than anyone could have a right to expect from you. And you still want to leave me behind? You met our foe and barely escaped with your life. You may not be that lucky next time. It wasn't luck. You can return to Switzerland with your head held high. Enjoy your triumph. I have not achieved anything yet. The fiend tried to kill us and he's still at large. What else did you find out in the tunnel? Not much. After we came out of the tunnel, Robert and I questioned the passengers. Which didn't turn up anything new? No. The engineer and the fireman were missing. They were found a few kilometers back on the track. Both claimed to have been overwhelmed by a shadow and thrown off the train. But you don't believe that. I'm checking their stories. One of them may have been paid to eliminate the other one. How could the Raven's heir have found out about the trap? How was he able to put the dynamite in the box and place the letter? The dynamite was probably already in the box when I put it in the safe. I didn't check it. You had no reason to do so. It wasn't my only mistake. I knew someone was on the roof of the freight car, but I let myself be distracted by that damned letter. How did you know? Too late. I should have reacted instantly. I'm coming with you. Full stop. The thief was able to place ten sticks of dynamite in a cash box right under my nose. For all we know, you could already be sitting on the next bomb. You cannot come. But, Inspector... We're here. Inspector Legrand, an urgent telegram from Paris. Bad news? It's about the unfortunate events on the train. I'm to return to Paris and explain myself. But, sir, 
What about the eye? They want to inform the Egyptian authorities that there might be a burglary attempt. Might? Egyptian authorities? What if the jewel is stolen at sea? I know, I know. I never received it. Keep a close watch on the loading of the eye, Robert. Aye, sir. It was a pleasure meeting you, Constable Zelda. What is the Constable's problem with me? I think he's jealous. Scotland Yard assigned him to assist me, just as you were sent by the Swiss authorities. Uh, with the distinction that he may go to Egypt. Robert is to accompany me at all times. Your mission was restricted to Switzerland. At this moment, I want to be sent back to Switzerland just as much as you want to be sent back to Paris. I know, but I'm walking on thin ice, and I can't carry you too. And the second eye is in that safe? Yes, an emerald. It's been kept in a bank in Zurich since the start of the war. I personally took it out of the bank vault and Professor Lucien certified that it was the real thing. And while a fake jewel was sent by train, the real one was brought here in an armored car. How is it protected? You can only open the safe if you have three special keys. Professor Lucien has one, and Baroness Van Trebitz, who's paying for all this, as the second. The third was sent by air courier to Dr. Abbas Mokhtar, the director of the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. So, not even you could possibly open the safe before it arrives in Egypt. That's correct. We don't want to make it too easy for potential thieves. Commendable. I hope you're aware of the fact that you're risking your career. Indeed I am. Why do you care so much about this case? Someone pretends to be the Raven, and you promptly risk your career? What if he's not just pretending? What do you mean by that? It's his handwriting. And there's only one person who ever called me Nico. Have you ever considered the possibility that I shot the wrong man? But wh what do you mean by that? Let us assume just for a moment that the person I shot and who fell from the roof was not the Raven. Who would have cared enough to uncover the truth? The chief of police, the politicians? No, they wanted to revel in a successful manhunt. And it was the best thing that could have happened to the Raven. The search for him was over. <laughs> he had no reason to fear me anymore. I had so many medals afterwards that he could hear them jingling kilometers away. And now he's back? And you're the only one who can stop him? Does that sound probable to you? The feathers, the letters, Nico. No one outside the police force knew that the Raven used to call me that in his letters. Policemen gossip, and there are plenty of forgers. You can't seriously intend to stake your reputation on such weak evidence. My reputation rests on something that I probably did not do. I have to find out who's behind all this. Let's review. One of the two most valuable jewels in the world was stolen. Obviously, the second one will be next. And you suspect a legendary burglar who's been dead for five years. Go on. The second jewel is about to be put on board over there, in a safe that requires three keys. Our thief may already have the first key, the archaeologist's key from the train. We don't know anything about the status of the second key, which was meant to be air freighted to Cairo. We have to assume that he already has it. Therefore, there's just one key left. The Baroness's. Correct. So, you'll need my eyes on board. Look, you can keep your eyes open for me here on the wharf. I'd be most grateful. But when this ship sets sail, you will not, I repeat, not be on board. But, Inspector... We're dealing with a dangerous man, and I will pursue him regardless of the consequences. I won't let you get mixed up in this affair. It's still my decision. No, it's not. It's mine, and I've already made it. Good day, Constable Zellner.
I'll be marching up this gangway today, no matter what. Someone has to stop that damn bomber before he endangers more people. Amazing how much luggage there is for so few passengers, and I'd guess that three quarters of it belongs to the women. I'll take an inconspicuous look up close. I wasn't expecting anyone to be crawling around on the ground in front of my door. Don't worry about it, miss. No harm done. Uh, that's good to hear, Mr... Zellner. Anton Jakob Zellner. May I ask your name? Patricia Mayers. Are you American? I am. Um, could you help me, please? Certainly. Are you on your way to Egypt? Yes. Are you on holiday? My father works for a railroad company there. And is rebuilding the country after the war. Wonderful. Yes, wonderful. One more. You're lucky to have a father who takes you to so many interesting places. Oh, yes. Lucky me. Aren't you interested in Egypt? The pyramids? The history? I would have been more interested in a father who doesn't travel 300 days a year. <laughs> I'm sure your father regrets that he can't always be with you. No doubt. And I'm sure he always wanted the best for me. But that doesn't stop him from thinking only about himself far too often. Bring my luggage on board, please. Excuse me? It was a pleasure meeting you, Constable Zellner. Impertinent. Constable Oliver seems to be a little simplistic. But I don't think he's a bad policeman. The way he reacted in the tunnel and got the train moving. Hats off. Hello, Constable Olivier. It's Oliver. I just wanted to say that you did a good job in the tunnel. Hmm, thanks. How did you know how to get the train moving? I come from a family of miners, and my uncle is an engine driver down the mine. I see. And you looked over his shoulder? Yeah, best way to learn. Did Legrand tell you about his theory? That it could be the real Raven? Of course he did. We're partners. But the modus operandi doesn't fit at all. The Raven wasn't a bomber. We have the letter. And the feather. That's his symbol. Anyone can put a feather in an envelope. You would know. What's that supposed to mean? It was you. What was me? You put the envelope on the safe. To blow myself up? You threw the bomb away. And now you're the famous hero, right? And the Raven must have paid you pretty well. That is ridiculous. Is it? Only you and I and Legrand were in the freight car. One of us must have put the envelope on the safe. Legrand didn't. And I didn't think about it. In my younger years, I might have considered abseiling from the crane down to the ship. But those days are long past. The sea is quiet today. Ideal conditions for a cruise. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to see the sights in Venice. Paperwork served up by my Italian colleagues took up most of the day. Hmm. Is the doctor afraid to board the ship? Hello, Dr. Gebhardt. Nah, the hero of the hour. 
The hero of the hour, but out of work soon. Oh, you won't be a policeman anymore? Yes, but on my old beat, which is almost as good as being out of work. <laughs> I understand. Is your new job bothering you? On the contrary. I wasn't sure whether I made the right decision until now. I'm from the Black Forest, you know. There are only mountains there. <laughs> no ships. But now... <sighs> the salty breeze. The atmosphere. I think I want to stay at sea forever. The sea is one thing. The passengers are another. <laughs> it will be okay. What do you know about the Baroness? Mm. Nothing, really. Did you talk to her in the tunnel? No. Her butler was looking after her, and I was busy with Miss Miller. As you can imagine, it was a shock for her to see her son rolling away on a burning train. That's understandable. So, we were all glad when we heard about your brave deed. Have you already met the captain? Mario Di Conti. Heard of him? Should I have? He is something of a star in Italy. A war hero. In the First World War, when he was a young man, he sank more enemy ships than anyone else. In the Second World War, well, he had some you know, personal problems. You mean, like the ones you buy in bottles and pillboxes? Mm. Yeah, you could say that. Anyway. Sending him into combat was out of the question. They gave him a supply ship instead, and he became a hero again. His ship, part of a convoy from Palermo to North Africa, was the only one that made it, with an extra 100 seamen who he rescued from the other ships. Impressive. To say his health is rather shaky these days would be an understatement. I think most of my time on board will be spent dealing with his numerous ailments. Well, there's nothing left for me to do but to wish you a good trip. Oh, you are not coming with us? Unfortunately, no. I'm to go back to Zurich. What a pity. Take care, Dr. Gebhardt. Keep an eye on the other passengers. I just remembered, we found these in the tunnel. Are they yours? I'm afraid so. Strophantine, do you have heart problems? Hmm. Maybe it's for the best that you're not coming along. Too much excitement could be bad for your health. You mean, if I don't do anything, I'll probably have a few more years to live? That's right. Keep your chin up. Hello, Baroness. Ah, Inspector. Constable. Poppycock. You won't be a constable much longer. When they find out how you rescued that little boy, they'll have to promote you to Inspector. Very kind of you to say so, Baroness. I hope you survived the adventure in the tunnel unharmed. Scandalous. You book a first-class cabin, and then you're walking on the rails. <laughs> they wanted to bundle me off in a bus without my luggage. The circumstances, madam. I insisted on a limousine and didn't leave until all my luggage was recovered. Did you know that the real Eye of the Sphinx wasn't even on the train? I had no idea. Inspector Legras seems to prefer to keep me in the dark, although I'm the one paying for all of this. The Inspector is ensuring the safety of the Eye. Well, obviously. All the same, it was you who did the real work on the train. I hope that the remainder of your trip to Cairo will be less stressful. You aren't coming with us? I'm afraid Inspector Legrand doesn't want my company. Fiddle faddle! You found my purse while he just sat on some boxes, uh, guarding the bomb that nearly killed us all. I want you to come with us. I'd like that as well, but... I'll speak to the captain and bear the costs. 
Baroness, I don't know. No, no trouble. I'll see to it. Now, where's my damned butler? James, there you are. Is the inspector to carry my luggage onto the ship all by himself? Uh, well, actually... <gasps> Baroness? Baroness, can you hear me? She fainted. No. No. Baroness? Again, harder. Hello. Can you hear me? I... Help me up. Uh, perhaps we should... Now. I'll get Dr. Gebhardt. No, 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 Doctor. Just a little moment of weakness. Your arm, James. Take me to the ship. But of course, madam. That was no moment of weakness? She saw something that shocked her, or someone. Very interesting, especially since she doesn't want to admit it. That's a fine automobile, but not even a stately sedan like this can handle all the Baroness's luggage. She was lucky that the second and third freight cars weren't buried in the tunnel. Most of her things made it unscathed. Who or what did she see? Neither of them seems to have noticed what happened down here. <laughs> You'll have a tough time with her. How does one get aboard without a ticket? Hmm. Not brilliant, but it's a possibility. I'll give the opera glasses to the Baroness or her butler, James, as soon as I have a chance. Here. Signore, this is Constable Anton Zellner. Signor Zellner, I heard about your feats in the mountains. Welcome aboard the MS Lydia. Thank you, Captain. I didn't know you'd be taking part in the journey, but I'm glad to have you with us. I'll have a nice cabin prepared for you immediately. The Constable will not be joining us. He has other duties. Oh. That's too bad. I would have loved to hear about his adventures from the man himself. I'd like to accept your offer, but unfortunately, higher powers prevent it. I am sorry to hear that. We are by no means full, and have plenty of room for one more passenger. The constable just wants to have a quick look around and then leave before we set sail. When will that be? Oh, in about uh, 15 minutes. There you have it, Constable. May I ask how to get to the cargo hold? Oh, Signore, there are much nicer places on board. But I'm interested in the cargo hold. Why is that? One of the trunks seems suspicious to me. Someone could be hidden in it. You? <laughs> you want to imply that the most brilliant and probably richest thief in all of Europe is stowing away in a trunk? That's not his style. That's what makes it more likely that it's not him, but a copycat who's behind all this. And a copycat's style might include doing whatever it takes, like 
hiding in a trunk if they've lost the ticket. Oh, come now. Actually, it would be possible for a registered passenger to board the ship without a ticket. What do you mean? You can't buy a ticket for the Lydia at the counter. You book the trip in advance. We know the names of all the passengers. As long as a passenger is on the guest list, we let them board the ship. Doesn't matter if they have a ticket or not. And did any of the passengers board without a ticket? I couldn't say. We ask for a name and check it on the list. The tickets are no more than souvenirs for the passengers. So much for your trunk theory. Good news. The Baroness invited me to come along. And, as a private citizen, I'm pleased to accept. A holiday on the high sea. Magnificent. Indeed. There's nothing finer. Unfortunately, the constable is needed in Switzerland. But, Inspector... There is an investigation into his obstruction of Interpol operations. I have a ticket, and I am... Not coming along, as long as I'm on board. End of discussion. <sighs> Regardless of what you say, I would still like to examine the cargo hold. All right, then, if you like. But we'll meet here again in ten minutes. Captain De Conti, before we depart, I'd like to send two telegrams. Certainly, Inspector. The cargo hold is over there. You can enter through a door on the forecastle. The horn will sound twice, five minutes before we set off. That's the signal for all the dock workers to leave the ship. Understood, Captain. Follow me to the bridge. You can send your telegrams from there. My time is running out. If I don't find anything in the cargo hold, my cruise will be over before it even begins. Oh, no. Oh, what's this? Aha! That's the young woman's cabriolet. Apparently they absolutely had to take it to Egypt, at daddy's expense, of course. Hello? Come on out. The game's up. I... I'm opening the trunk. He hello? I'm sure someone was in the trunk, but where are they now? The shards are... Phew, I startled too easily.
It would be best if no one found out about this. There's some blood and hair stuck to the pipe. Hair I really can't afford to lose. I'll hold it on the blood spattered end. After all, we already know who the victim is. A chair is the last thing I need right now. I was sitting long enough over there in the corner. The shot hit this crate. The question is, was the gunman actually trying to hit it? And if so, why? Maybe the gunman just wanted to intimidate me. I can't imagine a more effective warning. The cargo hold seems to be used as a changing room for the crew as well. Or at least the part of the crew that doesn't do their work in white suits. Detention cell for crew members? Or maybe for rowdy passengers? It's already dark outside. How long have I been unconscious? Ugh. Whoever locked the door is stronger than me. I should be careful. The gunman may still be nearby. What 
What are you up to, Zelna? I wanted to determine whether the gun had been fired recently, Inspector. I mean, what are you doing on the ship? I was jumped in the cargo hold. Of course you were. Here, look. Careful how you hold it. There could be fingerprints on the end. Surely you don't expect me to believe you. I was inspecting the trunk. I found it in the cargo hold, and it was clear that someone had hidden inside it to board the ship. Some people are willing to go to great lengths to be a part of this journey. Indeed. Whoever it was, they struck me on the head from behind with the pipe while I was looking for clues. Oh, and they shot at me as well. Ridiculous. You wanted to come along. Orders be damned, and so you found a way to stay here. I should throw you overboard. I would have dreamed up something less painful. Hmm, true. That doesn't look good. See? And there's a bullet wedged in a wooden crate down there. I don't have a gun. The doctor should have a look at it. Come with me. Inspector Legrand and Constable Zelna. So you have decided to join us on our journey after all. So it would seem. We are searching for Dr. Gebhardt. I'm just fine, Captain Conti. <laughs> the Conti. I'm in control. I can manage. Tell James he absolutely must wake me at a quarter to ten. Certainly, madam. Absolutely. I shall see that he does. And now, I shall return to my chambers. You'll be in the bar tonight at ten, Inspector. If that's what you wish. It will be spectacular. I promise. The fresh sea air, and perhaps a glass of champagne to many. But I'm glad that you decided to join us on our journey to Cairo. Not quite voluntarily. So he says. I was jumped from behind. But, no, that, that is... Dr. Gephardt should have a look at him, Captain De Conti. Of course. Please, have a seat in the saloon, Constable Zelna. I'll summon the doctor. Ah, doctor, there you are. Our brave constable Zelna was attacked. Struck on the head. Oh. Sit down, please. Now, please. Tell me exactly what happened. I think you've got a stowaway on board. I was jumped. Intolerable. I'll have the crew search every nook and cranny of the ship. And of course, Mr. Zelna, you are cordially invited to travel as our special guest. Good to know that at least one man doesn't want to throw me overboard. Is it bad? Yes, it hurts a lot. I spoke with Dr. Gebhardt. He suffered a violent blow to the back of the head. I cannot really say how bad it is. But I can. It really hurts. Why didn't anyone come looking for me? Didn't anyone notice that I didn't come back from the cargo hold? We did search for you, but we couldn't find you. Who was supposed to search the cargo hold? Constable Oliver. I'll have a talk with him about that later. I should hope so. How many fingers do you see? Fingers? Mr. Zellner. Three fingers. Okay. 
Where are we? And, and what time is it? I must have been out for ages. It's just after 8 p.m. You just missed dinner. But we'll all meet here in the saloon at 10 o'clock to have a drink together. Greeting the passengers personally is a tradition I will not break, even on this unusual journey. You're all right now, Constable. The bleeding has stopped and the wound looks good. You may have a mild concussion. You just need a good night's sleep. And tomorrow, your only worries will be a headache and an impressive bump. Thanks. That's a good enough reason to celebrate. Enough about crooks and thieves. From now on, you can start to enjoy your free cruise. Uh, uh, Inspector! What? A dark shadow. Upper deck, just now. Go, let's have a look. I'll join you. Me too. No, you stay here. Do you want to make this an argument? Robert, go to the Baroness and don't let her out of your sight. Zellner, you're coming to the port side. Doctor, you go to starboard. I'll start at the forecastle and work my way back to the two of you. Understood? But... Baroness von Trebitz! Hello? Baroness von Trebitz? Open the door! Dr. Gebhardt insisted on coming along, but now he doesn't seem to be sure if that was a good idea. Are you okay, Doctor? Oh, of course. Why wouldn't I be? It's just that... Well, I would prefer to come with you. You heard the Inspector. All right, Doc. I'm off. Oh, no. I'm not going on a manhunt all by myself. Are you okay? Maybe you had better take a rest, in case the blow was more severe. I'm okay. Zelda, up here. Come on. I think it came from up there. Sure, you just wanted to get a breath of fresh air. Zelna, look who we have here. Well, if that's not our shadow. And our stowaway. Spend any time hiding in a trunk recently? Uh, me do, do nothing. He claims to be part of the crew. Just wanted to get some fresh air. Of course. The Baroness won't open the door, sir. Understood. Take him to the detention cell, Robert. You were right, there was a stowaway. Yes, but he can't be the Raven. He's too young. Right, but that doesn't mean that the Raven isn't lurking here as well. What was that? A shot! It came from one of the cabins. Oh no! Baroness Van Trebitz? Baroness, open the door!
Step aside, please. We have a murder on our hands, gentlemen. Hurry, Zellner. The murderer still has to be nearby. There is practically no one on deck. Anyone who's outside is a suspect. This time, we'll get him. Zellner, are you okay? Yes. Come on. We have to. Zellner. Zellner. Murder. Ah, you awake? Sleep well, did you? I didn't fall asleep voluntarily. Ah, it doesn't matter. We got along just fine without you. Have you arrested anyone yet? You mean besides the Arab? He could hardly have committed the murder. You must have been with him when it happened. We heard the shot on the forecastle. I locked our friend in the detention cell in the cargo hold, and then went up to assist Legrand. You were already sleeping the sleep of the just. Any other suspects? No. Seconds after the alarm went off, the decks were swarming with frightened passengers. Hmm, yes. A clever way to stay incognito during the commotion. Hmm, but we still have our primary suspect, the Raven. You really think he's returned? Well, I think that no one knows as much about the Raven as Legrand. But still, it all seems so incredible. I didn't pass out last night because of the blow to my head, did I? Seems unlikely. Inspector Legrand thinks you were drugged. But how? The champagne. Who gave you the glass of champagne? Hmm. Captain De Conti. Interesting. It should be possible to find traces of the tranquilizer in the glass. That is exactly what Legrand is trying to do. Without a laboratory? No, oh, he's got a lab. His cabin is packed with all the latest forensic stuff. It's quite impressive what the inspector can do. A competent man, no doubt. And surprisingly well prepared. And diligent. He's been at it all night with his brushes and tinctures and glasses and everything. Working like a man possessed. I wouldn't want to be the Raven now. What's the state of play? How was the Baroness killed? Uh, the Baroness was shot in the chest at close range. We'll know more once the doc finishes examining the body in the medical center. And no one saw anything suspicious? <laughs> no one saw a shadowy raven leaving the Baroness's cabin, if that's what you mean. A lot of people heard the gunshot. Inspector Legrand wants to question the passengers again this morning, once they've all calmed down, and he's had a chance to examine the evidence. I suppose that you and Legrand inspected the crime scene and the surroundings. Of course. And we already hit the jackpot. The murder weapon. Really? Where did you find it? On the gangway. The gangway for boarding the ship folds up and hooks onto the hull when it's not being used. The murderer probably wanted to throw the gun into the sea. He casually dropped it overboard. But it landed on the gangway. Bad luck. But Legrand and I were on the side deck right after the shot. There was no one there. Hmm. Maybe the murderer threw the gun away later. We recovered it in the early hours. Hmm. I think I'll look for Inspector Legrand now. Hmm. Do what you think's best. You won't get rid of me. I'm here to stay, Constable Oliver. Be that as it may. Inspector Legrand ordered me to guard the cargo hold with our special guest. That's fine by me. Inspector Legrand may be able to get by without sleep for days on end, but not me. 
It's not easy playing with the big boys, Constable Zellner. No, it certainly isn't. An antique wooden globe. If Galileo hadn't asserted himself back then, this would be a flat disk now. The globe nicely shows that four-fifths of the Earth's surface is covered by water. Looking out the window, I'd call that an understatement. How wonderful. Sunshine and a blue sky above the Mediterranean Sea. It would be a perfect cruise day, if not for the murder. The ship must have been rebuilt at some point. I'm sure it didn't originally have such a modern glass roof. Big, soft towels. I could reserve a deck chair with it. No, better not. These things made quite a racket last night. I couldn't hear myself think. I'd really like to lie in the sun and take a nap, but I don't have time for that at the moment. No, Jacob. Business before pleasure. Did Edison have any idea what would become of his invention? Curious. One can easily toss a gun into the sea from almost anywhere on the ship without being noticed. And yet, the murderer chose the one spot where it's not actually possible. The gangway is hard to miss. Why did the murderer drop the gun on the gangway? They must have noticed their mistake, even if their back was to the sea. So, why didn't they take the gun and throw it a few meters farther into the sea? I suppose the life jackets are stowed there, close to the railing, close at hand in case of emergency. I hope I don't find myself needing a life jacket.
It may not seem like it, but Constable Oliver is actually a very effective watchman. Constable Oliver brought something to drink. You can tell it's not the first time he's had to guard something. The bottle should be full of water, unless the good constable happens to have a secret alcohol problem. No way to verify that. I can't get the bottle without him noticing. The stowaway surely didn't sleep well last night in the cargo hold, although his cell is probably more comfortable than my cabin, and more spacious. I have to talk to the young fellow right away. If I want to get into the cargo hold, I'll have to get rid of the constable first. He won't let me talk to our young friend. I have to talk to the young... If I want to get... He won't let me... I have to talk to the young fellow right away. If I want to get in, he won't. I wonder if this game is an advanced version of Bocce. Maybe the inventor realized that it's difficult to play ball games on a boat and came up with an alternative. Salty sea air in my old lungs, wind in my thinning hair. If I hadn't become a policeman, I could have been a sailor. Uh, 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 what's going on? The raven just flew by. What? Or at least, he might as well have. Uh, I wasn't asleep. I understand. It was just a ruse. Any conclusions about a young stowaway? Uh, he's a bit suspicious. Foreign and whatnot. I see. Did he act suspiciously in any way? No. The shot surprised him as much as it did me. Looked in on him earlier. Still seems to be asleep. Covered with a blanket from head to toe. Ah, oh, oh. he's still in there. I poked him. May I go downstairs and have a couple of words with our guest? No, you may not. Come again? Inspector Legrand wants to conduct all the interrogations himself. I'm sure he'll understand if I form my own conclusions. He ordered me to guard the door, and that's just what I'm gonna do. How about a bit of individual initiative? How about letting a man do his job? Or do you think you'd be better at it? What do you think? What happened here last night? The Raven broke into the Baroness's cabin, she surprised him, and he shot her. What was he looking for in her cabin? She was a rich woman. Why did he lock the door? <laughs> Why not? From inside? An impressive trick. I'm not saying I know how he did it. I'm just saying that it was him. Why didn't he leave a Raven feather? Are you serious? We'd have suspected him straight away. But fortunately, we still did. Let's assume that the old Raven really has returned and that he really is responsible for all this. Who is he? Or she? Oh, could be anyone. No one's ever seen the Raven. He could also be paying someone else to do his dirty work. Well, of course. 
Oh, it's a fact that he used to work with partners. They even arrested some of his accomplices. But no one could ever identify the Raven himself. Some claims that they didn't even know that they were working for him. Fascinating. He could have hired someone with financial difficulties to set off the alarm at a certain time without that person knowing why they were doing it. The man Legrand shot back then. He was a famous safecracker. He could just as well have been a henchman. Or the real Raven. There's probably no better cover for a big thief than acting like a small one. I don't want to keep you from your duties any longer. Good idea. We were here yesterday when we heard the shot, and it was also here where Legrand caught our stowaway. Hmm. The grate must be part of the ship's ventilation system. Nothing out of the ordinary. The grate shouldn't be so easy to open. Did the stowaway open it and we caught him in the act? Hmm. No. The pipe is too narrow. He wouldn't fit in there. I guess the cover has been defective for a while. Hmm. A boat like this would also make a good hideout for a stowaway. Were the tarpaulins arranged like that on purpose so that no one could put them back in order once they get in? You can tell at a glance that everything is ship-shape with this boat. I could inform the captain that the grid has to be repaired, but if I start reporting all the problems on the ship, I'd have to shelve my murder investigation. This isn't a panoramic deck for visitors. There are pipes, steel cables, chains up here. You can smell the smoke from the funnel. I have no idea how the ship works, and I really don't care, as long as it stays afloat. Why is there an axe hanging here? Hmm. I suppose it's for chopping through ropes in the event that the lifeboats can't be lowered. Or they use it to enforce who's allowed on the boat and who's not. The ship's bridge. Two men. One of them navigating. I get the impression that the officers keep things running. It seems like the captain concentrates on the passengers and the bar. I better let the men do their work. If one of them had detected something yesterday, he'd already have informed the Grand or the captain. There's dirt piled up in the corner. Down below where the passengers are, the ship is pretty clean. But the crew doesn't seem to care as much up here.
Hmm. The cabin was sealed. I'm pretty sure the seal doesn't have any legal relevance here on the open sea, but I'm still dependent on Legrand letting me join his team. I better not blow it by breaking his seal without permission. I better ask Legrand for permission first. My investigations would be much more difficult if he were upset with me because of such things. An evacuation plan? And some tips from the doctor for avoiding seasickness, sunburn and the like? And here, a schedule of activities. A drink with the captain, a shuffleboard competition on the forecastle, and that's about it. A real barrel of fun. A model of the Lydia before it was rebuilt. It used to be a freighter. The wide hallways, the cabins, and the saloon were added later. A pitiful attempt to make the interior of the ship seem less dreary. A bit of paint on the walls would have helped more, especially since a plant won't survive long without daylight. Hmm. There are little stones in the flower pot. Not only does the poor plant have to make do without sunlight, it doesn't have any soil either. Really? What am I supposed to do with stones? Although, sooner or later, small even stones probably easier to handle on a ship than real soil. Come in! Hello, Dr. Gebhardt. And there's the next one. Excuse me? You want something else from me, don't you? I'm afraid I do. What a first day at work. Well? What's the result of your examination of the victim? She's dead. I didn't make you work all night long, Dr. Gebhardt. <sighs> she was shot. Point blank shot. Probably with a pistol. It seems like she was lying in bed. The shot struck her heart. She died immediately. One shot? More were unnecessary. And we only heard one shot, no? And there's just one entrance wound. Just one. I am told that I was drugged. That's how it seems. What can you tell me about it? Me? Why should that be my business? Haven't you analyzed the glass? No, I haven't. The inspector said he's the better chemist. I let him do it. That way I could at least concentrate on the body. Do you think the Baroness might have been drugged? She was very tired and unsteady when Legrand and I saw her. Yeah, I heard about that. I must have just missed her in the saloon. And without having seen her myself, it is hard to make a diagnosis. Of course. Can you say something about her general health? She was quite overweight, and the butler said that she suffered from diabetes. Despite that, she hadn't visited a doctor for several years. Doesn't sound good. Happens more frequently than you might suppose. Some people are scared of doctors, <laughs> and pay with an early death. It is possible that the Baroness wouldn't have lived much longer anyway. Do you know whose glass I drank from? What do you mean? Captain de Conti handed me a glass of champagne. But where did he get it? I... 
Don't know. Did you ask him? I'm just asking because you were also in the saloon when the champagne was served. Yes, but I only entered the saloon a few seconds before you did. I didn't manage to get a drink myself. Which, in retrospect, is lucky. Ah, you're right about that. Have you already removed the bullet? Did Legrand send you? What is that Frenchman's problem? I already told you. I will get in touch as soon as I have it. That is also what I told the constable, who he kept sending all night long, once I finally got rid of Legrand himself. Did he look over your shoulder? He probably wanted to take the scalpel from my hand and hack away himself. But this is my surgery, and I will not let amateurs interfere with my work. That's understandable. How much longer will it take? Ugh. I have just finished. Send my regards to His Majesty. Thanks. I think that's it for now. No. That is it for now, then, and later. I'm going to lie down for a few hours. Can you tell that to your boss? But... Could I at least have the key? Absolutely not. But if we have to examine the victim again... Then the esteemed inspector knows where to find me. In my cabin. In bed. Good night, Constable Zellner. That's the bullet from the Baroness's corpse. I don't know much about guns. Legrand will be able to tell me more about it. An alarm like this one was set off yesterday. Mm. This one hasn't been set off. The security seal is intact. I'm not paying for this trip, and that's a fair price for my cabin. It's rather... plain, shall we say. No, I've slept enough. That is Legrand's cabin. Come in. Ah, Zellner, are you ready? Good morning, Inspector Legrand. Uh, my head is pounding, but I think I'm okay. Chloral hydrate. Hmm? That's why you have a headache. I found traces of it in your champagne glass. What have you found out so far? The Baroness was shot in the chest at close range. We heard the shot. The murderer quickly fled the cabin and dropped the murder weapon over the railing later. A simple story so far. But why was her cabin door locked? Exactly. If the murderer wanted to make it seem like a suicide, he'd have shot her in the head and left the gun at the crime scene. And if it was murder, why did he go to all the trouble of locking the door from inside? And how did he manage that anyway? Especially since we arrived just a few seconds later and didn't see anyone near the cabin. Something doesn't make sense here. No, it doesn't, and it's driving me crazy. Did you find the murder weapon? On the gangway on the side of the ship. I suspect the murderer tried to drop it into the sea. He would have stood close to the railing to let it fall unseen. And since he doesn't know the ship, he had bad luck and dropped it right onto the gangway. Indeed. And do you find that probable? Not a bit. Neither do I. 
What kind of a gun is it? A pistol. A Luger 08. Antique. Manufactured a million times during and after the First World War. Austrian model. The owner is David Kreutzer, the violinist. We found him tonight totally drunk on the bow of the ship. He confirmed that it's his gun, but he claims that it was stolen from him. Fingerprints? Nothing. But it's worth mentioning that the clip was missing two bullets. Hmm. And it's definitely the murder weapon. The ballistic tests are incomplete. Actually, I've been waiting far too long for the bullet recovered from the corpse. Pay the good doctor a visit, Zellner, and see that he does his job. About the bullet, here it is. Excellent. Give it to me. As I suspected, a 7.65 Parabellum Luger. Don't you want to examine it in more detail? When I have time. For now, though, we can assume that we had the murder weapon. There can't be too many antique Luger 08 pistols on board. May I take a look at the Baroness's cabin? We already searched it thoroughly. Sure. But what about now, by daylight? Yes, yes, fine, it can't hurt. Here, take this with you. Thanks. I'll let you know if I find anything important. But only then, please. I'm very busy. Of course. Do you believe the violinist? He'll be the first person I question. He claims he can't remember anything from the last few hours. Says he drank a bottle of schnapps. He was on the train, and he doesn't have an alibi. His drunkenness could be a smokescreen. He fits the profile, he travels a lot, has access to high society. Could be interesting. And this chloral hydrate? Is a tranquilizer. Can be dissolved in alcohol. The effect begins in minutes and lasts for hours. Who gave you the glass of champagne? I believe it was Captain De Conti. If believing were enough for us, we'd have become priests, Constable. Be a policeman and find out for sure. Understood. You think that the jewel thief is the murderer? Our friend would have needed another key to open the safe and steal the second eye. The one the Baroness was carrying. At least, that's what we implied. What do you mean? The Baroness was famous for her forgetfulness. I convinced her to give me the third key. It seems safer for the eye. The thief searches the Baroness's cabin looking for the third key. She returns from the saloon earlier than expected, surprises him, and he can't allow her to identify him. He imprisons her until the coast is clear and then shoots her. And thus, the thief becomes a murderer. But still doesn't have all the keys. Are you sure that there's no bomb inside this time? Professor Lucien locked it in front of an audience, and it will be opened for the first time in Cairo. Let's hope so. It would take hours to crack it, and you'd need heavy machinery. Or the keys. Or the three keys, that's right. Do you think... Do you really think that the Raven is behind all this? He wrote the letter that was on the safe in the train. Without the letter, we wouldn't have opened the safe, and the bomb wouldn't have exploded. But it doesn't seem like him, does it? The Raven was famous in part because he never hurt anyone, much less killed anyone, during a burglary. It's his handwriting, and he called me Nico. No one else does that. I chased that man across Europe for years. It is him. It has to be him. But the evidence... Enough. I'll be on my way. I want to find out who gave me the drugged champagne. Good idea. Inspector Legrand? Are you okay? Maybe you should take a break. I can sleep once I've caught the raven. Goodbye, Constable. Be seeing you. Legrand is risking not just his career, but his health as well on his hunt for the Raven. He's working like a demon. 
Maybe that's why he caught the raven and no one else. This is the first murder scene I've ever set foot in. Hmm. The notepad has the ship's emblem on it. I suppose all the first class cabins have them. It says, Inspector, be in the saloon at 10 p.m. There is a murderer on board and I will expose him. B. <whistles> the Baroness seems to have known the murderer. And that means that the Raven can't be the murderer. He never killed anybody. Legrand probably never got the message, otherwise he'd have said something. The mannequin surely came with the cabin. A mannequin for the Baroness's clothes would have a more generous figure. The most unportable portmanteau I've ever seen. A portable bar is more like it. Must be hard work transporting this big heavy thing halfway around the globe. And the Baroness was lucky that the other freight cars were only lightly damaged by the explosion. An impressive piece. But I don't think it'll get me anywhere with the murder investigations. Another alarm. It was tripped at some point. The seal is broken but there's no way of telling whether it happened yesterday or five years ago. A big, ugly and impractical vase. If it had a wider opening, one could at least use it as an umbrella stand. Hmm. Can't see anything. Wow, heavier than it looks. Ha ha. Hmm. 
Hmm. Nothing special. Although, it seems like one of the feathers was scorched at the top. Literally burnt. I'd better take it with me. Why were the down feathers tossed in the vase? Or is there anything else in there? There may be something else in the vase, but the neck is too narrow to reach in with my hand. Hmm, a tape recorder. Must go with the built-in speakers. Probably part of the cabin's furnishings. The tape recorder is older than the hills, but it was once very expensive. Top of the range. And it doesn't come cheap. Hmm. Strange. There's only one reel. And it's the wrong one. No. No sign of the original reel. A reel made by Zeibling. I know the brand. Zeibling's tapes can be overwritten many times without losing quality. They're used in offices so that executives can record messages for the secretaries on the same tape over and over again. But they're not good for much else. They're robust, but they don't offer much in terms of sound quality. There's still blood on the mattress. The sheet and the blanket have already been removed. To analyze them, I suppose. Hmm, nothing. The blood spot is the only sign that someone committed a crime in here. Hmm. Somehow, that's odd. The blood is so red. Shouldn't it gradually darken in the air? Turn brown? The unusual color of the blood could be something that Legrand and Dr. Gebhardt missed last night. All cats are gray in the dark as the saying goes. I should take a sample. I guess our stowaway knocked me out. Whatever his story is, he's not a thief. Nothing's missing from my wallet. Sunflowers. By Van Gogh, I presume. He liked to paint that sort of thing. Can't be an original. They cost thousands of francs. There should be a ventilation shaft behind the hatch. Usually a good way to break in and out undetected. But we run a ship. The ventilation shafts are very small here. I can't say why, and it seems impossible. But something tells me that the murderer entered and left the cabin through the door. The only question is how. The door frame was damaged when Dr. Gebhardt kicked it in. The real question is, why was the door locked in the first place? Hmm. Assuming the murderer isn't a magician, and the Baroness locked the door herself before she went to bed, the murderer couldn't have left the cabin through the door. So, the murderer must have still been in here when Dr. Gebhardt kicked the door in. Which is unlikely, because someone would have seen him or he found another way out of the cabin.
the Baroness's butler looks like he didn't get much sleep. I would describe his facial expression as worried. Hello, Mr. Inch. Oh, Constable, hello. You look the worse for wear. It must be terrible for you. Quite terrible. No one will hire me now. Uh, excuse me? My mistress was murdered. Would you hire a butler who's been mixed up in a murder? But if it turns out that you're not guilty... If? But what if not? Who else would they blame? There are no gardeners on this ship. <laughs> I understand your problem. Under these circumstances, I'm sure you'd answer some questions that could help clear your name, wouldn't you? Of course. Did you notice anything suspicious last night? No, sir. After the Baroness went to the saloon, I went to the forecastle. I was there until the alarm went off. I went to the side deck and arrived shortly after Professor Lucian and Miss Miller. We found you and Inspector Legrand there. You were unconscious and the inspector asked us to take care of you. Did you hear the gunshot? No, just the alarm, sir. You said you were on the forecastle. It sounded like the Baroness let you have the rest of the night off. Not entirely, sir. One of the crew informed me that the Baroness wanted to be roused at quarter to ten. Right. Why was that? I suppose that she wanted to toast the success of the journey with the captain and the other passengers. She hadn't intended to take a nap then? That was not her way, sir. She had a lot of spirit, shall we say, when it came to social engagements and a glass or two of champagne. The Baroness's cabin seems to have been ransacked. Indeed, sir, by the Baroness herself. Really? She was searching for something the entire afternoon. And did she find it? I think she did, sir, yes. She was in high spirits when she finally left her cabin. You wouldn't happen to know what she was looking for, would you? I'm afraid not. Would you describe the Baroness as orderly? Uh, well, she... She always had a lot of responsibilities, sir. That doesn't answer my question. She used to take a lot of luggage on journeys, and I helped her keep track of it as best I could. She was always very angry when she couldn't find something. What about the photos and the documents I saw in her cabin? I really don't know. They were out of bounds to me, sir. Memories from the war, I'd say. They meant a lot to her. The Baroness seemed to be pretty drunk the last time I saw her. Is that so? Does that surprise you? Did the Baroness not drink? Oh yes, she drank. It was no secret. I understand. Uh, how serious was her habit? Serious enough, sir. Was she under any medical supervision? Certainly not, sir. She adamantly refused to see a doctor. Like so many elderly women, she had a distinct aversion to hospitals and the like. How long had you worked for the Baroness? Six months, sir. Only six months? I always thought that butlers stayed with their employers for decades. Those decades have to start at some point, Constable. Her former butler wasn't able to fulfill his duties any longer. Gout, sir. I understand. I took on his duties and hoped for a secure position for the next 20 years. May I ask what happened to your arm? A souvenir from the war, sir. Doesn't it hinder your work? Yes, sir. Obviously. I didn't mean to offend you. The Baroness had a soft spot for disabled veterans. I think she'd been through a lot herself. I think that's all for now. Please, sir. Find the murderer. You have to clear me of all suspicion.
The alcoholic drinks and everything that goes with them is top-notch on this ship. As expected, fresh ice and tongs. Constable Zelda, what is the meaning of this? Are even the police light-fingered nowadays? I need this tool for a criminal investigation. Well, why didn't you say so? So, how are you getting along? Can I be of any help? Actually, you could answer a few questions. What was your experience of last night? Oh, terrible. Dinner was fantastic. Everyone was excited about having a pleasant drink under the stars. And then this. You were in the saloon all night long. Yes, the captain. I have to care for my passengers. After you and the others crashed out, I tried to maintain a festive atmosphere. <laughs> but when the alarm it goes off, I lose the battle. <laughs> How was the Baroness? She really surprised me. After she was so unapproachable at the reception and didn't show her face for the entire afternoon, I was afraid she was one of the bores and bourgeoisie. But then she arrived in the early evening in the best of moods. Already had a few, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Did she say anything to you? She asked me where Legrand's cabin was. I told her, then invited her to come for drinks in the evening. I said it would be great fun. The whole ship will be there, and you don't want to miss that, I told her. And then? She seemed to like the idea. She smiled and then left again for a few minutes. Then she came back and seemed very happy. We drank a toast to life. But at some point she didn't feel well anymore? She overdid it a bit. She suddenly started to swoon and almost spilled her drink. I asked her if she wanted to rest for a moment in her cabin. At first, she didn't want to. She definitely wanted to stay in the saloon. But then she realized that she really did need to lie down. We left together. You know the rest of the story. Did everyone drink from the same bottle of champagne last night? There was more than one bottle, if that's what you mean. There were quite a few guests, and the event lasted several hours. The last bottle of champagne, the one the Baroness drank from, did anyone else drink from it? Certainly. We have reason to believe that the champagne was drugged. Incredible. But wouldn't that have made everyone drowsy? Not if it was only the Baroness's glass that was drugged. I see. That's possible. On a night like that, many glasses are filled and emptied. There are several stewards, many guests. No one keeps track of every glass and every bottle. A few drops in a glass? Yes, it's certainly possible. The glass you handed me last night, where did you get it? Ah, I understand. You think your glass was poisoned as well? Did you pour it yourself? No. I saw that you weren't doing so well and wanted to rescue the situation. I took the first available glass and I give it to you. Was it on the table? No, I hurry over to you, together with Dr. Gebhardt, who, of course, he had the glass in his hand. He was looking around for a place to set it down so that he could examine you. I took it from him. And gave it to me. I'd like to apologize for that, but you look so worse for the wear, and I just wanted to comfort you. I didn't think of looking for a new glass for you. Hmm. So the doctor had the drugged glass in his hand. Is it possible to find out where the alarm was set off? I'm afraid not. There are alarms all over the ship. I saw that they're sealed. Can't we just check whether the seal is broken? I'm afraid they're gonna be missing on a lot of alarms. You know, this is an old ship, and over the years... So, you're saying that the alarms haven't been regularly maintained? I'll inform the crew immediately, of course. Of course. What can you tell me about the passengers? Oh, not that much, I'm afraid. I wanted to get to know them properly at the reception. 
In most cases, I just shook hands with them as they boarded the ship. There are a few regulars on board, and after dinner, I had a conversation with Mr. Kreutzer, a talented violinist, and Lady Westmacott. But you already know them from the train. It seems like there aren't that many passengers on board. These bloody airplanes are making our lives miserable. Can you imagine? Grown men prefer to jam themselves into a narrow metal coffins instead of enjoying the fresh sea air on a ship. It's all about saving time. It shouldn't be about how much time it takes to get from A to B, but about how you spend that time. What you experience on the journey, that's what it's about. I'll get back to my investigations now. Ciao, Constable. Lady Westmacott seems to be an early bird, but maybe that's just because of all the excitement. I saw a twinkle in her eye on the train. She's eager to be part of a real detective story. Lady Westmacott, already on your f Oh. Constable, don't you think before you speak? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. No time for chit-chat. What have you found out? We're still working on the case. Actually, I have a couple of questions for you. Please, go ahead. What did you think of our adventure on the train? An extraordinary story, isn't it? I'm glad that you were able to prove yourself, Mr. Zellner. Hopefully not for the last time. I'm glad that everything ended well. I want to thank you sincerely for taking care of Matthew. I can't bear to think about something happening to him. It all worked out in the end. Do you think that the thief from the train and the murderer are the same person? I think the new Raven is capable of anything. Legrand believes there is no new Raven. He thinks that the old one has returned. He said that. Do you think it's possible? Everyone thinks he's dead. As a dramatist, the return of the Raven would certainly be delightful. A legend comes back from the grave for one last job. It's quite romantic. At the same time, though, I'd be disappointed. Why is that? I followed the Raven's career closely. There weren't many burglars with such character and charm. His burglaries were clever and entertaining, but he was sloppy in London. He almost got caught, and I'll never forgive him for the affair on the train. No, I would much rather that the Raven stayed dead and had nothing to do with the burglary or the murder. What do you think? Who is our suspect? Everyone, or almost everyone. Everyone on board is physically capable of shooting someone, but who has the dark desire to take the life of a defenseless person? One cannot read minds. And one should not try. You have to collect evidence, traces, clues. That's what will lead us to the killer. It won't be like a bad crime novel, in which they introduce a new character shortly before the end who, surprise, surprise, is also the murderer. Murderers leave evidence. They're nervous or unnaturally relaxed. They have to adjust constantly. And because of that, they make mistakes. This is your chance, Constable. If you find the mistake, you'll find your murderer. Have you noticed anything related to the murder? Unfortunately not. I was already in my cabin and missed all the commotion. Damnable old age. You're telling me. Oh, you're still young. At my age, you have to expect that you won't experience much anymore. And although I've written about murder so many times, I've never actually witnessed one. How exciting. I doubt everyone is so relaxed in such a situation. Heartless is the word you're searching for, right, Constable? I certainly didn't want the Baroness to be murdered, but if I can't undo it, then I might as well enjoy it. What do you think of Inspector Legrand? He seems to be as skilled as everyone says. Intelligent, focused. I had a chat with him yesterday, and he impressed me, but 
there's something haunted in his eyes. I don't think he ever really stopped hunting the raven. Catching the raven made him famous. What if he actually shot the wrong person? Unjustified fame bothers people, the good ones at least. And you think he's one of the good ones? Anyone who tries so hard to tear down his own memorial must be honorable. <laughs> or insane. I have to be going, Lady Westmacott. Please keep me informed, Constable Zelda. Of course. Good work. There's something in there. Ah. Someone stuffed this in the vase. Looks like it's been used to muffle a gunshot. If this isn't an important discovery, I don't know what is. Legrand, here I come. A singed pillowcase is proof that there must have been a second gunshot. In... Hector? Can't you knock? I... I uh, didn't realize. I'm really... I... I'm not getting anywhere. I'm going to question each passenger individually. Anyone without an airtight alibi will be checked for gunshot residue. But, Inspector... People trip up when you put pressure on them, Constable Zellner. The Raven is nervous. He's changed his methodology and become a murderer. I'll see it in his eyes. After you. But, Inspector Legrand! We have no proof that the Raven and the murderer are the same person. You may not know it, but I do. I will catch him, with or without your help. I don't believe it. What's gotten into him? Oh, well. It makes no sense to tell him about my theories, if his opinion is already set. I need evidence. Or better yet, 
the murderer. I also need his lab if I'm going to get anywhere. I need to get in there somehow. And I really need to talk to the stowaway. He may have information, and the inspector will just ignore him since he's too young to be the raven. The grand locked the door. The lock isn't especially secure. If I had a wire or something like that, I could probably pick it. The portholes face the side deck. If someone climbed out of the cabin through a porthole, Legrand and I would have seen them. Something's under there. More feathers. And they're singed as well. I'll put them with the others. Hmm. The portholes are locked. One cannot open or close them from outside. It's the same problem as with the door. If someone left the cabin through the porthole, how did they lock it? And the Baroness wasn't shot from outside. The doctor said she was shot at close range. Apparently, the Baroness didn't have time to unpack her bags, or rather, didn't have time to tell her butler to unpack them for her. Hmm, sifting through all that would take ages. But here, the Baroness's handbag. Aha! A small leather-bound book. 1964 is engraved on it. This must be the Baroness's diary. Let's see. Yes, it's a diary, all right. Difficult to read. No entry from yesterday. A brief, sober description of what she's done recently. Met Morris. Arranged benefit concert for renovation of Louvre Southeastern Wing. Times photo shoot for Eye of Sphinx. B.M. Poor excuse for photographer. Too fidgety. And so on. Hmm. This entry looks strange. The handwriting is shaky. Difficult to read. Dreamt of Bobby. Yesterday would have been his birthday. Next week, Jay's. Hmm. Cosmetics, a handkerchief, a spectacles case, nothing special. 
The Baroness was a very busy woman, and it looks like she had to cope with loss. She writes about Bubby and Jay. Neither seem to be alive anymore. Almost every family lost loved ones in the war. Maybe hers as well. I'll leave it there. I don't have time to read all of it. The unusual color of the blood could be something that Legrand and Dr. Gebhardt missed last night. All cats are gray in the dark, as the saying goes. I should take a sample. The death of his mistress doesn't really bother Inch. He's only worried about his own future. The death... Mr. Kreitzer, come on, you have to give me a bit more. You're the only one who was on the train and who has no alibi for last night. As I said, I was in my cabin. Are you sure that it was your cabin and not the Baroness's? Legrand will question the guests, one after another. But if he doesn't get the answers that he wants to hear, it could become unpleasant for them. Mr. Kreutzer clearly feels uneasy. But does Legrand actually think he's the raven? He was on the train and has sticky fingers, that's true. But he doesn't have the profile of an international master criminal. Legrand is absorbed in the interrogation. He still seems pretty annoyed. The violinist seems to be bearing the brunt of it. Lady Westmacott, may I bother you for a moment? By all means, Mr. Zellner. How is the questioning going? Are you implying that I'm an eavesdropper? The inspector is placing a lot of pressure on our dear Mr. Kreutzer. He's the only one who was on the train and who doesn't have an alibi for last night. Perhaps. But him? A murderer? I know people like him. He doesn't have enough backbone to kill someone in cold blood and remain so calm. He'd turn it into a drama and then a farce, drink himself insensible, and then, railing at fate, pitch himself into the sea. Forget him. Legrand is wasting his time. Mr. Kreutzer just happens to be a perfect fit for the inspector's image of the raven. Athletic, cultured, moves among the rich and famous. I'll eat his violin if he's the raven or the murderer. I have to be going, Lady Westmacott. Please keep me informed, Constable Zellner. Of course.
Miss Mayers seems to have found an opportunity to do nothing. Hello, Miss Mayers. Hello, Mr... Uh, Constable Zelle. Do you think it's appropriate to go sunbathing in a situation like this? What situation? A woman was murdered last night. If refusing to sunbathe could bring the dead back to life, I'd go back to my cabin immediately. Did you hear or see anything suspicious last night? No, I didn't feel very well last night. I went to bed early. So, you were feeling better this morning? Thanks for asking. I'm sure your parents are truly sorry that they can't be with you at this difficult time. Maybe, but I'm not a little girl anymore. And thinking about my fiancé keeps me going. You... you're engaged? Yes. My boyfriend and I got engaged right before the trip. I want to surprise my parents, especially my dad. I'm sure he'll be very surprised. But what will you do if your father doesn't agree to the engagement? What choice does he have when he put me on this boat full of thieves and murderers in the first place? Charming. Enjoy the sun, Miss Mayers. And don't let us disturb you. If you're trying to make me feel guilty, Constable, it's not working. Captain De Conti seems old and tired. The price you pay for a life like his, I suppose. I believe I've got everything I can out of him. There's nothing more he can tell me at the moment. Matt is keeping himself busy with that strange game. He seems to be okay again, but I think he'd be running around all over the place if he'd really come to terms with what happened on the train. Hello there, partner. Hi. 
Are you all right? Uh-huh. Have you recovered from our adventure? Mm-hmm. Um, Mr. Zellner? Mm-hmm? What's going on? What do you mean? Everybody's acting so strange, and there's tape across that door. I saw that in a movie once. You don't have to be worried. Is it about the man from the train? It might be about the thief, yes. Haven't you caught him yet? I'm working on it. Okay. I heard you and your mom used to argue a lot. We did. Everything was bad. The house, school, the other kids. We didn't have much money, and I was always alone. You do know that your mother would love to have been with you, don't you? She had to go out to work to earn money. She wouldn't have had to if Dad were still around. Mm. And how do you get along with her now? I'm always happy when we do something together on vacation. She has more time for me now, and I like my boarding school. I have lots of friends, and the teachers aren't so bad. Your mother and Professor Lucien seem to be on very good terms with each other. Mm. Don't you like him? Don't know. He seems to be very nice. I guess. Lady Westmacott is all by herself in the saloon. Maybe you'd like to visit her later. Sure. The lady tells exciting stories. I know. She's my favorite writer. She told me that it's not much fun to write detective novels. She'd rather write something else, but her fans always want the same thing. They made her rich and famous. I told her to write what she wants to write. If it's good, someone will buy it. And if not, at least she had fun writing it. Then she smiled and nodded. She said it was a good idea. What are you playing there? I'm playing shuffleboard. At least I'm trying to. Never played it before. It's easy. Professor Lucien explained it to me. And who won? We didn't play. You didn't want to play with him, did you? Do you want to play a game with me? Sure. I think you'll have to explain the rules to me first. Okay, you play with the blue pucks and I play with the red ones. You have to push the pucks with this stick into the zone over there and score as many points as possible. Sounds easy. How many pucks do I have? Six. Now here comes the kicker. First it's your turn, then mine, and so on. But everyone is allowed to shoot the other person's pucks out of the zone. Then let's get started. Oh yeah. What are we playing for? Uh I thought we'd just play for fun. That's boring. We have to bet something. Otherwise, it isn't fun. You English people. So I'll bet my brand new slingshot. And you? I don't want to gamble. How about ice cream in Cairo? Okay. If I win, I get the slingshot. If I lose, I get an ice cream in Cairo. Hey! Never try to cheat Matt Miller. So, what do you say? Ice cream versus slingshot? Mm, all right. Let the games begin.
rats. Haha, <laughs> I win. That's one ice cream for me. You've been practicing. This time, I'll win. Nah, I doubt that. That's another ice cream. This time, I'll win. Nah, I doubt that. That's it. Oh, man. The athlete wins the day. One more time. No, that's enough for me. All right. Here. Are you sure? Gambling debts are debts of honor. I'll give it back to you when I don't need it anymore, okay? Okay, but make sure my mom doesn't catch you with it. She thinks it's dangerous. I'll let him play for now. The little stones make perfect ammunition for the slingshot. Now I just need a suitable target. Miss Miller and the professor are talking intensely. She seems pretty relaxed by her standards. Good morning, Miss Miller. Professor Lucien. 
Constable Zellner, how are you? I, I heard you passed out last night. Well, not quite. I was poisoned. Oh. That wretch! Who do you mean by that wretch? That stone. That new raven. The young man can't be the murderer. Constable Oliver had already apprehended him when the shot was fired. You mean... Whoever killed the Baroness is still on the loose. I think I should take my leave. I I'd like to rest for a while. One last question, Professor. Do you think the eye is well protected in the safe in Legrand's cabin? Of course it is. They assured me that it would take hours of work with heavy machinery to crack the safe. And if Legrand isn't in his cabin, Constable Oliver or I check that everything is in order every hour. I understand. I want to go back to my cabin. I'll see you later, Mary. Oh, of course. See you later. I... I didn't want to interrupt your conversation with Professor Lucien so abruptly. I, uh, I don't know what's wrong with him. Learning that there's still a burglar on board seemed to frighten him. He was so relaxed the whole time, and then... Hmm. And then, the stupid Swiss constable came by and made him anxious. Oh, I didn't mean that. No matter. I'm sure he'll calm down and come back soon enough. May I ask you a few questions? Of course. How is Matt? He seems happy enough. After all the commotion, he's already back to his old self again. But I haven't told him about the murder. That would be a bit too much for him. I think he's made of sterner stuff. I want to thank you again for what you did on the train. I wouldn't have known... Everything's fine. Think nothing of it. How was last night for you? It was awful. I was having a conversation with Edgar, uh, Professor Lucien, here on the forecastle. Then I wanted to look for the lady and went forward via the side deck. When I passed the Baroness's cabin, I heard a muffled scream. You heard a scream? Yes. I thought the Baroness probably had a fall. I went to the door and listened for a moment. Since I couldn't hear anything, I knocked on the door and asked whether she was all right. There was no answer. Interesting. And then? I, I didn't know what to do, so I tried to open the door. It was locked. I saw the Baroness's butler, Mr. Inch, on the forecastle. I thought he might have the key and went back. On the way, the bobby crossed my path, and then Edgar, who wanted to check the safe. I explained the situation to him, and then the alarm went off. How did the scream sound? It was a short outcry, very frightened, as if someone had been startled. Was it a woman's voice? Yes, the voice was high. So it could have been a scream from the Baroness. Possibly because she discovered someone in her cabin. Possibly. That person might have threatened her with a weapon, so that she wouldn't scream for help. Oh, God. He waited until the coast was clear. Oh, please, stop it, Mr. Zellner. The Baroness's butler said that he was on the forecastle as well? Yes, he was standing on the other side of the deck smoking a cigarette. Was he on the forecastle the whole time? Uh, I'm not sure. He was there, and later he was on the side deck with us. Oh, yeah, yes, he, he looked after you while you were unconscious. He unbuttoned your collar and held your head while the doctor checked you. But you can't say for certain whether he came from the forecastle with you and Professor Lucien, or afterwards. Well, no. But where else could he have come from? Did you report that to Inspector Legrand? Yes, last night. He was very interested and took a lot of notes. But I wanted to look for Lady Westmacott, and he let me go without further delay. He said that he'd take down my full statement today. I understand. Do you think the man from the train also killed the Baroness, Constable Zellner? I don't know yet. It's horrible. Explosions, thieves, murderers. This isn't the right place for a lady and a little boy. You and Professor Lucien seem to be having a lively conversation. Oh, yes. He's an expert in ancient Egyptian art and preeminent in hieroglyphic research. He's the head of the Egyptian department in the British Museum, you know. And he's going to open an exhibition at the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Right. For the eye. They had planned on exhibiting both jewels together for the first time in decades, but that's not going to happen now, sadly. 
I think it's quite upsetting for him. We're working hard to ensure that at least one eye will be on display. I know. I'll ask Lady Westmacott if she'd like to participate in the opening of the exhibition. I think it would be good for her. And Professor Lucien will surely offer you a private tour. You're American, aren't you? That's correct. And you moved to England because of the job? I lived in England before. During the Second World War, I volunteered. I worked in a pharmacy on a U.S. base north of London. In a pharmacy? Interesting. Well, it was the war and everyone was sent where they could help best. Please, go on, Mrs. Miller. After the war, I studied music in London. I met my husband there. We married and went back to the States together. He was also American? No, English. But he said he had problems with his family and he wanted to be as far from them as possible. And you gave up your studies for him? Well, yes, I did. Life as a single mother couldn't have been easy. It was pretty tough then. I worked from morning till night and it was still only enough for the bare necessities. And I couldn't give Matt all the attention he needed. And then, Lady Westmacott entered your life. It was like an angel appeared to me. She must have offered me the position out of pity. I had no experience as a carer. She made me a generous offer. I couldn't believe it. And she really adores Matt. She's offered him a good education, and now he has every opportunity in life. An almost unbelievable story. I'm still afraid that it's a dream and that I'll wake up one day. How does it feel to work for such a world-famous person? The work is very interesting and varied, and it pays well, too. You are very lucky that the lady offered the position to you. I just hope she won't change her mind one day. What would become of Matt's education then? I really make an effort to measure up to Lady Westmacott's expectations, but sometimes I feel like I fall short. Lady Westmacott couldn't ask for a better companion. I'm saving up as much money as I can all the same. I'd do anything so that Matt doesn't have to give up his new life. Lady Westmacott dropped a hint on the train that she killed her hero, Partout. What did she mean by that? Oh, she must have meant the manuscript. Manuscript? She always takes it with her. It's an unpublished Partu novel. I once asked her why she never published it. She said that according to her will, the novel's only to be published after her death. And in it, Partu will be killed? Maybe. I've never read it. No one has. You'd better ask her yourself. If you worked in a pharmacy, you would certainly know something about medicines and poisons. Everything is a potential poison constable. It depends on the dose. Have you ever heard of chloral hydrate? It's a tranquilizer, isn't it? I'm asking you. Lady Westmacott also asked questions like that for her last novel. But since I've never wanted to kill anyone, I never bothered with things like strychnine and arsenic and all that. I could recommend something for a headache, a sore throat or rash. That's kind of you, but there's really no need. I'll be seeing you, Miss Miller. Constable? The bottle should be full of water, unless the good constable happens to have a secret alcohol problem. No way to verify that. I can't get the bottle without him noticing. The little stones make... You mean, someone shot at you? Yes, well, no, um, I don't know. Didn't you notice anything? I was riveted by the fantastic view. We Swiss aren't used to seeing the horizon like this. And my bottle's broken too. Oh, I don't believe this.
The bottle is nothing more than broken glass in a puddle. If Constable Oliver gets thirsty now, he'll be in a bind. I should help out. Ahem. <clears throat> uh, what do you want? Inspector Legrand is questioning the first of the passengers in the saloon. And? It will be hours before he gets to the stowaway. And? We'll save time if I question him. We'd also save time if you stopped asking me the same things over and over again. I will not let you in. What time is it, by the way? Got an appointment? No, but I'm hungry. Go and get yourself something. I'll mind the door in the meantime. Aha. Uh -huh. You could bring me something, though. So, what do you want to eat? Oh, anything. An apple or something like that. Leave it with me. Yeah, thanks. Excellent. Ah, that's just what I needed. Coffee is not bad at all, but one cup is enough. Lady Westmacott, may I bother you for a moment? By all means, Mr. Zellner. Did Miss Miller cope with all the excitement? I think so, but what happened on the train was quite a shock for her. She wouldn't be able to go on if something happened to Matthew. She's worried about him. He's all she has. It breaks her heart that he lives at a boarding school and can't always be with her. But she sets her wishes and needs aside so that he can get a good education. That's her way. Where is Matthew's father? Gone. Run off. Ran away from his problems again. He drank a lot. More and more after each setback. It's better for both of them this way. He left her. She couldn't have borne it. She loved him and wanted to stick by him. She fell out with her family over him. They couldn't understand her. And when he left her, the ground opened up beneath her feet. For two weeks, she was as good as dead. If she didn't have Matthew, she'd be dead. You seem to know a lot about it. I mean, about the time before Miss Miller began working for you. I have my reasons. And Matthew, do you care as deeply about the children of your other employees? If you fail with your own child, you hope to do better with others, Constable. And the idea to send Matt to a boarding school... Was mine. Matthew idolized his father and blamed his mother for the fact that he wasn't around anymore. I was afraid the situation would escalate if he had to live on a country estate alone with his mother and some old people. I think I was right. He quickly made friends at boarding school. He's popular, well-liked, a real athlete according to his teachers, and... His relationship with his mother has improved as well. He's headed in the right direction. Miss Miller told me that you have a valuable manuscript with you. That is correct. An unpublished part two novel. The manuscript must be worth a fortune. Oh, 
It's not just any part two novel. I wrote it 20 years ago, but it will only be published after my death. It's Partout's last case. Maurice Partout dies. You... you're going to kill him off? I already have. And I enjoyed it. Madam. I was so sick of writing one Partout novel after another. I was keen to uh, stick a knife in his guts. And so, 20 years ago, I did. Of course, I didn't want to disappoint my fans, so I let him solve case after case. But at least I was certain that he'd never escape me, that in the end, I would get him. I understand. Let's just hope that this novel remains unpublished for many more years. I have to be going, Lady Westmacott. Please keep me informed, Constable Zelda. Of course. Whatever Constable Oliver wants, he's getting ham and eggs. And just a pinch of salt for our friendly constable. Good. Constable Oliver. Huh? Ham and eggs, piping hot. Oh, I thought I shouldn't really. I don't see anyone here who'd rebuke you. It was a hard night. Yeah, true. Oh, delicious. <laughs> Just enough salt. <laughs> mm. Oh, that was good of you. Cheers. You don't expect me to wash your dirty dishes as well, do you? No, of course not, Your Majesty. Could you, uh, could you bring me something to drink? Those ham and eggs were pretty salty. I'm sorry. I have to proceed with my investigations. Goodbye. Let's see how long he can resist his thirst. Not long at all. Nervous? I would be too in your position. Who are you? My name is Adil, and you are... Constable Zelna. Why did you sneak onto the ship, Adil? I wanted to go back home. You're Egyptian? There's no work for me in Italy. I want to see my family again. And since you don't have money, you stole away. So what if I did? So, it was you who knocked me out. Me? <laughs> Never! No? Where were you when I was attacked? Well, I couldn't take anything with me on this trip, so I uh, snuck into the kitchen and took some canned goods. Interesting. And how do you know when I was attacked? Well, I, I thought it was yesterday, shortly before we set sail. I take this bump personally. What were you searching for on deck last night? I was hiding the whole evening. I wanted to go out and get some fresh air, see the stars. But then suddenly, they were looking for me. Were you in one of the cabins? No! Did you see anyone on the deck or on the roof? No! And after we arrested you? The English policeman put me in this cell. Then he left. I've been here ever since. And you didn't notice anything along the way? No, nothing. What about the gunshot? Didn't you hear it? Uh, yes. The English policeman had already arrested me. We heard a bang and looked around. And then? 
Then, the Bobby was in a hurry to get rid of me. He almost pushed me down the stairs and locked me in here. He left, and, and then a short time later, the alarm went off. Constable Oliver wasn't with you anymore when the alarm went off? No. I was scared that the ship would sink with me sitting here like a rat in a trap. It's hard for me to believe a single word of your story. Because I'm a foreigner? Because you seem to have learned our language in the space of a day. Accent free. Believe what you want. Who paid you to distract us? What? You went for a walk around the deck and let yourself be seen. Everyone goes off hunting you, and in the meantime, your partner shoots the Baroness in peace. No, I didn't do anything. I didn't want to distract anyone. I, I just want to go home. You're a liar, and a bad one at that. But sir, I'm telling the truth. And I'm the Raven. Inspector Legrand will deal with you. He's lying like a cheap rug. But he probably doesn't know anything about the murder. Very disappointing. So I have to keep searching. What interests me most is the shot that was fired here in the cargo hold last night. The cargo hold also seems to serve as a changing room for the crew. At least for the ones who don't wear white uniforms. A stroke of luck. The lock is open. Hmm. Oil-stained overalls. Whoever fired the shot hit the crate. Did the shooter just want to intimidate me? Or maybe he needed the bullet? can't see anything. If the bullet is still stuck in the wood, it's too deep to reach with my fingers. No, the bullet hole is too small for the tongs. through a lot. Hardly any paint, dented, and the lid is held shut by a wire. I'll take it with me. Hmm. Some wrenches, a bit of wire wool, an oily cloth, and here, a screwdriver. The bullet is still in the wood. I'm not a weapons specialist, but at first sight I'd say that this bullet looks exactly the same as the one Dr. Gebhardt gave me for Legrand. That would mean that the murderer also fired a shot here in the cargo hold before the murder. But why? Did they just want to make sure the old gun still worked? Or was it something else? And did the bullet really come from the same gun? I can only check that in Legrand's cabin. I've got the screwdriver. That's all I need. A stroke of luck. The lock is open. Hmm. Oil-stained overalls.
a stroke of hmm. Boy. The young man is lying. Somebody put the trunk back on the shelf. I can't tell whether it was our young friend or someone else. It must be uncomfortable traveling like that, even if you're as young and slim as our guest in the cell over there. I could take one of the saws with me as a souvenir. On the other hand, it'd remind me of my bump and of my rather inelegant escape. takes the biscuit. I noticed that the door was unguarded. I just wanted to make sure that everything was all right. Tell it to Legrand. He's expressly forbidden anyone to speak to the witness before he does. Don't act like that. Legrand can't manage all this alone. We're a team. Only until the end of this case. Legrand already knows and gave his approval. Really? So you don't mind me confirming that with you? All right. Let's go to Legrand and tell him what happened. You fell asleep, and then you left the door unguarded. Well, are we going? Hmm? Uh, no, but don't try it again. Of course not. The lock isn't especially secure. I should be able to open it with the wire from the cargo hold.
there we go. There's nothing written on the bottle. I suppose it's some sort of stimulant, legal or not. Legrand has been awake for at least 30 hours straight, maybe more. I shudder to think what kind of side effects this stuff might have. A policeman on a murder investigation should have his wits about him. The risk that he could miss evidence or endanger himself and others is too high. Legrand's file on the Raven. Centimeters thick, but totally useless. We're not dealing with the Raven. Why can't he see that? Our man is ruthless, a bomber, and quite probably a murderer. This file belongs in a museum. It's history. The inspector should concentrate on the present. This is the pipe from the cargo hold. Legrand seems to have inspected it for fingerprints, I can still make out the powder. Hmm, no. Nothing to see on the end of the pipe that the attacker held. Either he wore gloves, or he cleaned the pipe. Aha! That's the bullet the doctor removed from the Baroness's corpse. The doctor removed this bullet from the Baroness's heart. According to Legrand, it's from a 7.65 millimeter Luger cartridge. A microscope. Looks like the one that Lutz Reichinger uses in his pharmacy, just more modern. There's nothing on the slide and therefore, nothing to see. Lagrande must have taken them yesterday, at the crime scene. This photo provides an overview of the crime scene. Yes, that's how we found her yesterday, I think. I wasn't really myself at the time. Hmm, no. Nothing suspicious. Hmm, yes. The bed, the blood spot. The spot on the sheet is much bigger than the one on the mattress. There's blood on the blanket as well. A lot of blood, I'd say. The blanket and the sheet are gone. I guess they're in the medical center. Shot in her sleep. She didn't feel a thing. She went to sleep and never woke up. A rough diagram of the ship. Legrand marked the Baroness's cabin. Seems like he didn't turn up anything else of note. Another alarm. It was tripped at some point, but there's no way to determine when. <laughs> hmm. Smells like chemicals. Legrand probably developed the photos in here. There are still fragments of the syringe that the inspector broke in the sink. Why is he pushing himself like this? Even if he catches the raven, is it worth ruining his career and his health? Legrand must have taken and developed the photos himself. He even made copies and enlargements. He seems to be prepared for everything, with access to more resources than a normal detective.
neatly folded and unused. Legrand hasn't slept since we cast off, nor on the train. A lock, master, and son. Tough to crack. If I wanted to steal the eye, I'd concentrate on getting the three keys. If everything goes according to plan, the first time this monster is opened will be in the museum in Cairo. Fingers crossed. can't put the pillowcase under the microscope, but I don't need to. The burn marks are visible to the naked eye. Okay. I need the second bullet for a comparison. All right. That's the proof. Whoever shot the Baroness also fired the shot in the cargo hold. What could that mean? Both bullets came from the same gun. That means that whoever shot the Baroness was also in the cargo hold. That fact may be important later. Small even A masterpiece. Forensic teams use kits like these. They're placing increasing importance on the preservation of evidence, but not in Switzerland yet. It's a small lab used to conduct simple analysis on site. All right, what have we got here? Half of the tools in this box will be interesting for an archaeologist as well. Actually, forensics and archaeology are really quite similar to each other. The goal is to find out what happened, whether a few hours ago or a few centuries ago. Fingerprints are overrated. Smart thieves wear gloves, or they make sure that there are too many fingerprints at the crime scene to check them all. I'm sure Legrand could work magic in this alchemist's lab. Me, I'm just awestruck. For forensics in the woods or the open country, I suppose. No use on a ship. Good Lord. 
Good Lord. A small glass bowl for mixing chemicals. A small glass bowl for mixing chemicals. Aha! This is some kind of inventory list. For each chemical it lists the chemical composition and a short comment on how to use it. And here's a list of the most important procedures. Fingerprints, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, gunshot residue, blood. I don't have to analyze the pillow and feathers to determine whether there's gunshot residue. I can smell it. And I don't have any other clues at the moment. The booklet will be useful once I have something to analyze. What's this? Oh, how practical. A hermetically sealed cotton swab for collecting samples. I'll take it. I always wanted to do that. That should be enough.
wasn't there something about blood samples? Fingerprints, mm-hmm, mm. Gunshot residue, blood, mm. Well, it explains how to confirm that something is blood. That's a start. You have to mix luminol and a hydrogen peroxide solution and then drip or spray the mixture on the blood. The solution turns blue and glows even if there's just a very small amount of blood. Okay then, luminol and hydrogen peroxide. Aha! Luminol! And there's the hydrogen peroxide. I'll mix it with the luminol in the bowl. Okay. I can detect blood with this mixture. The clear solution turns blue if it comes into contact with blood. I think it's better to drip the solution on the swab instead of dipping the swab into the solution. Maybe oxygen is an issue, or it doesn't work if you use too much of the solution. Okay, I'm filling the pipette and putting it down very carefully. So, let's see what we have here. No blood. Not the slightest reaction. If I didn't make a mistake, and it wasn't that difficult, then the spot on the Baroness's bed isn't really blood. But if it isn't blood, what is it? And more importantly, why didn't Dr. Gebhardt notice anything? He was supposed to have examined everything. Hmm. I'd say it's time to visit the medical center. It seems impossible that Dr. Gebhardt could have shot the Baroness. He was with me when the gunshot ran out. But he must have noticed that the Baroness was lying in a pool of fake blood. Maybe he's covering for someone. Let's find out. It's probably for emergencies, in case a passenger falls down and can't walk anymore. Possibly due to rough seas, or maybe the captain's well-stocked bar. The sink looks like it's been cleaned recently. I can't say whether it was cleaned to comply with the hygiene regulations, or whether there was another reason. Interesting. A tape on a reel. The reel belongs to a much better player, like the one from the Baroness's cabin. I can't be certain that this is the reel that was missing from the Baroness's cabin, but it seems quite likely. A tape recorder from Seibling. Interesting. The reel in the Baroness's cabin is from the same company. Hmm. A microphone was plugged into the tape recorder. Maybe Dr. Gebhardt records the results of his examinations and writes them down later. Okay. 
Hmm. Nothing. Strange. There. Very interesting. shot is audible on the tape and the reel comes from the Baroness's cabin. It's all coming into focus. I guess the trash bin is in here. Right. Paper towels, plastic packaging, cartons and... Hold on. What's this? A burst rubber glove. It's knotted, and there's a red liquid all over the inside that looks like blood. I bet good money that it's the same fake blood I found in the Baroness's cabin. <laughs> Dr. Gebhardt will have trouble explaining how rubber gloves full of fake blood got into his trash bin. First, the fake blood he missed in the Baroness's cabin and now this. It doesn't look good for you, Doctor. That's proof enough for me that the Doctor is involved in this. I should report to Legrand. Time to pay Legrand a visit. No. No, don't, don't. Oh. 